Tonight, we are live from historic Farrington Field in downtown Fort Worth, where tonight the Grapevine Mustangs take on the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets in a battle for playoff positioning. That is up here next on Mustang Friday Night. Right, he's going to be stopped for it. And it's in the end zone for the touchdown. Good evening, Mustang fans, and welcome to the AC Pros pregame show here on Mustang Friday Night. I'm Jacob Dedimore, along with my broadcast partner, Tim Smith. We're with Champion Sports Radio. This broadcast, of course, powered by Tradio. And tonight, we bring you a pivotal playoff matchup, playoff positioning matchup between the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets and the Grapevine Mustangs. Tim, these two teams are very similar coming in. You look at how their seasons have gone. They've had very similar results. They also play at least as far as the style they want to play, a similar style of football. And tonight, I think we're going to have a pretty good, pretty good contest here. Yeah, both teams are going to run the football. Both teams are going to play stout defense. And they're playing for that number two seed tonight. It feels like a playoff game because it is somewhat of a playoff game. You're playing for that uh, first home game in week one of the playoffs, which is so important. And so this is uh, certainly going to be an exciting game, more exciting than we've seen uh, from these two teams in the past because really and truly the Yellow Jackets are here to play this year. They are, and, you know, that we're going to see a, a team tonight that relies on a lot of youth on their on both sides of the ball. Their leading, running, their leading rusher is a freshman. Two of their leading uh, tackle for loss producers on defense are a freshman and a sophomore on the defensive line, but they do have at key positions. They've got experience both at linebacker and at quarterback. They've gone undergone, I think, based on just – what I've been able to gather a little bit of change and it happened early in the season at the quarterback position uh, as last year's starter Eric Orozco has not played since week one I'm going to assume that's because of injury we don't know uh, but he has been replaced uh, mo mostly by senior Alan Banks who is not as is more of a passer than he is a runner more of a passer and yet they still don't throw the ball that often but it's there it's available to them certainly with the new quarterback and that's a shame when you change quarterbacks like that but we don't know the exact situation i think for tonight both teams are hoping that we can escape the rain that's been in the forecast all week long it looks like it could be moving south of us but it's windy uh, we have the, the the flags are straight out so kicking could certainly be a little bit of a challenge tonight who knows what's going to happen, but I'll tell you what, Grapevine's defense played great a week ago against the run. And uh, talk to a couple of those D linemen. You'll get that here a little bit later on the pregame show. But this team is expecting, Grapevine is expecting to see a lot of running out of Arlington Heights, and they are excited for it, and they're ready for it. And I think what you're going to see with Grapevine tonight, they're going to need to lean like they did last week, build on the defense, see if they can hit some of those big hitters that they just missed last week offensively in the past yep. game. The run game has been solid for Grapevine all season. Uh, we also have a bit of a change in the offensive line tonight, which we'll talk about in a bit. But it is going to be kind of like Grapevine has all year. They're going to need to lean on that defense tonight to get stops and slow down the Arlington Heights ground attack. Yeah, everything starts with that defensive line. Devin Thomas, Ty Hohenberger, Bradley Stanier, those three guys anchor this defense down. The linebackers are flying all over the place, of course. And then on offense, the great thing about what we've seen from Grapevine is Hackbarth has had a couple of games where he's really gotten loose here recently. So there's that play action, the little boots, all that's in play. And they've got their big tight end, uh, who is always a huge target in uh, Brady Wagner. So there's certainly some opportunities for Grapevine tonight, especially if they can get those safeties down in the box. As we get prepared for that matchup, I did have an opportunity to sit down again with head Grapevine head coach Bob DeBest. So let's go to that right now and hear the thoughts of the Mustangs head coach. Jacob Dedamore here, and I'm joined right now by Grapevine head coach Bob DeBess. And coach, game one of this little two-game set here that was going to determine your playoff future went well on Friday night. It was a tough, very physical ball game against mm -hmm. a, a really tough uh, Wyatt squad that 
I know Tim and I both tipped our hats to for how mm-hmm. they played in that ball game. What were your thoughts coming out of Friday night? Well, it wasn't a surprise. I mean, anybody that would listen, you know, we, we talked about Wyatt. We talked about Southwest. We talked about Wyatt. We'll talk about Arlington Heights. But, I mean, they're, they're really good football teams. When you're 6-1, and one, uh, you know, at the seven, uh, after seven games in the season, you're doing a lot of things good. And they were as, as good as we thought they'd be and maybe a little bit quicker and more physical uh, on defense than maybe we had anticipated. Uh, they did a great job uh, neutralizing our front. Um, it came down to, to, to the turnover takeaway margin. You know, we were up four to nothing mm-hmm. um, there. Minimized our penalties other than the celebration penalties, <laughs> which we're <laughs> fine with. Um, but at any rate, uh, give give Y a lot of credit, man. They're, they're a really good football team. They're experienced, got good schemes, and tough kids. And I thought it was a very uh, clean game mm-hmm. on both sides. You mm-hmm. know, I, I thought it was a really good high school football game. You know, you guys, I mean, as we as you talked about, you know, Wyatt, especially defensively, uh, was really doing a lot of good things up front that was disrupting you on offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a couple of opportunities that, you know, with in the passing game that mm-hmm. just didn't con- didn't quite connect. Mm-hmm. They were there, yep. but didn't quite connect. But the defense really led the way on both sides. It gave up the one drive in that first half, right. but really stepped up in the second half. When you go in at halftime and it's that close of a ball game, what do you tell the kids? Uh, this is this is the life we're living. You know that's I mean this this is who we are. Um, our margin for error is is not great. Um, we have to play really good defense because we've got some you know we've got some challenges on the offensive side, particularly against a defense like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, it was again like the Southwest locker room, um, confident, business like. Adjustments were made. Uh, kids were. Upbeat and positive, ready to go up, you know, back out and play again. And um, it was a little bit like the Southwest game from a defensive standpoint. And then I thought we came out from the get-go and kind of established ourselves that uh, that we were kind of in charge. Um, but Wyatt did a really good job of just kind of nickel and diamond. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But once again, uh, the most important stat in football is turnover takeaway, and whoever wins the turnover margin usually wins the game. And uh, when you're up 4-0, you know, um, you don't lose many of those. What's it like in that game? You know, obviously we get, you get the kickoff return to start huge. the game. Yep, huge. All the way, you know, return it for a touchdown, 91 yards from mm-hmm. Rondale. What does that do to a sideline when you get a, a big play like that right off the bat? Well, it energizes everybody. Um, you hope for things like that. You work for things like that, but they don't happen very often. Right. And he went untouched, um, and so it just energizes everybody. I mean, you 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 can't have a better start than that to a ball game, and so the way the game played out, obviously, that kickoff return for a touchdown was really Absolutely. big. Absolutely, was really big as far as the margin of victory was concerned. And finally, when we could make it a two-score game in the fourth quarter, um, you could you could see where there might be a path to victory for us. Um, so. Proud of the kids. Defensive kids were absolutely exhausted afterwards. I mean, literally, oh, yeah. absolutely exhausted. Uh, they laid it on the line, and and uh, like you said, and you know, offensively, um, we had two big passes. I mean, Hack put on the money. I mean, just absolutely yeah. on the money. Two big explosives that, you know, usually when you have an explosive or two during the series, your chances of scoring goes up. You know, who knows? But you know, we didn't get it done, and and so we struggled a little bit offensively. But uh, it was a it was a really good team win. You know, when you have a situation like that on the offensive side where obviously we all know that this is a, a, a run-based offense, mm-hmm. that you're going to try and occasionally pop passing mm-hmm. game for a big play, and you're so close to connecting uh, on multiple mm-hmm. multiple mm-hmm. plays during the game. When you sit down and talk with the kids going through the films, what do you t- – I mean, and, and in some cases it's just a matter of, you know, just didn't quite secure the yeah. catch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that you, happens. Yeah. yeah. What do you tell the kids when you're working on it through the week, trying to get them because it's not something you do as often? Well, you, you look know. at it. You 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 look at it in a positive light. You don't look at it in a negative light. You look at it as a, this is what we can do, not mm-hmm. what look what we did. You right. know, uh, look how we screwed it up. Not not like that at all. It's you look at it in a positive light. Um, you know, it's 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 really important that the kids walk away from games, win or lose, play good, play not so good. Knowing that their coaches believe in them, mm-hmm. um, and you know we we do what we do be, for a team based decision. 
You know, we can't put our defense out on the, you know, if we were to go out and try to throw it every down and, and spread it out and try to hurry up and all that kind of stuff, we do a tremendous disservice to our defense and therefore to our team. Um, the defense is the strength of our football team, without a doubt. And so we need to be smart offensively and try to take our shots uh, when we can and try to capitalize when we can. And that's why I'm saying our margin for error isn't great. Um, and so you're not going to hit all those explosives. Uh, Say we hit one of the explosives. Sure. You know, uh, now all of a sudden we got a little bit more of a cushion than what we did at the end. But we'll take it anyway we can get it. Got a team coming up tonight in Arlington Heights over mm -hmm. here in downtown Fort Worth. They're kind of a similar situation, at least from a coaching standpoint, not unlike what you came into this year. Their head coach right now got the job very late very in late the process mm -hmm. with a change there. Took over now, like you, he was an assistant on the staff, mm -hmm. took over at the end of July. Mm -hmm. Kind of... For, I know we talk about this at the beginning of the season. What mm -hmm. is that like when you get a job like this late in the process? Well, different, or a little bit different, because he didn't have to. He had to hire one guy. Right. I had to hire eight or nine guys. You know, um, so there's a little bit of difference there in that. You know, schemes are already in place, both sides of the ball. Um, the reason I think probably that uh, you know the change was made as late as it was to ensure that somebody got the job and mm -hmm. keep the continuity. And um, you can see that from last year's video to this year's video as far as the style of attack. Um, their motivation is exactly our motivation. I mean, we're both fighting to share the district championship. We both have to have help for that to happen. Of course. But we've also got to take care of our business, you know, our own business, and we can, you know, try to control what we can. Um, short of that, it's a finish in second place. Um, sole possession of second place. Um, which means, you know, important things towards playoff seedings. Like a home playoff game. Yeah, and so, you know, we're both playing for, this, for the same things as far as motivation is concerned. Uh, you look at comparative scores, they lost to Colleyville 42-7. to We lost 43-7. to They beat Wyatt 20-6. to We beat Wyatt 20-7. to right. um, it, shape, it shapes up to be a, a, a real even match. Um, I, I, I like... I, I told the kids, I think we go in as the underdog because we're the visiting team, you know, and uh, how, how good a job we do of minimizing distractions when it comes to, you know, being on the road because we play pretty good at Mustang Stadium, but, um, you know, that'll, that'll be a de big determining factor. Speaking of distractions, did you ever think you'd have a World Series game as a distraction <laughs> no, on Friday night? No, and uh, I hope it's not a distraction, but um, I'm fired up for the Rangers, uh, and I think most of the team is fired up for the Rangers. Um, I mean, that, what, what an unbelievable story. Yeah. What, a, what a great lesson for all athletic teams. One year to the next, I mean, they were a disaster, right. you know, uh, a laughing stock in some ways last year. And, uh, you know, it's amazing, uh, you know, what you, can, what you can do with the right attitude and the right pieces. Well, Coach, as always, we wish you the best of luck. We're looking forward to this game tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a fun one. Yes, it is. Thank you. Those are the thoughts of Head Coach Bob DeBess. We'll be back with more of the AC Pros pregame show. This is Mustang Friday Night, brought to you by Tradio. Hi, I'm Russ Teeger. And I'm Laura Teeger. We're the proud owners of AC Pros, family owned and operated business going on 26 years. And here's a little bit of what we do. Hi, I'm Jim Bradley. I'm a comfort specialist here at AC Pros. We are a full service residential and light commercial HVAC company. We do sales and service for residential HVAC. We also do windows, uh, attic efficiencies, radiant barrier installation, solar fans, to make your system last longer. Today we're out here in Keller servicing one of our customers outside units. This is Joel, our lead tech, taking care of the maintenance today. At AC Pros, we're small enough to care, but big enough to take care of business. Go Mustangs! Welcome back to Farrington Field here in downtown Fort Worth as we are getting you ready for the district matchup tonight between the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets and the Grapevine Mustangs. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio here with you. And right now, it is time for the Week 9 edition of Tim's Takes, brought to you by our friends at Lee Lewis Construction. 
Week nine, I can't believe it. Thank you, Jacob, and welcome back everybody into the Mustang Friday Night AC Pro pregame show. As your Mustangs get set to take on Arlington Heights Yellow Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets here tonight for playoff seating, as we've discussed this week. As always, I had a chance to stop in at practice and speak with two of the defensive linemen who have been absolutely tearing up opposing offenses this year, and that's junior defensive end Bradley Stanier and junior nose tackle number ninety-five. Ty Hohenberger. First up, I spoke with Bradley Stanier. Now, Stanier leads the Mustangs uh, defense in sacks and is at the top in total tackles as well. He's listed at 6'6", and I can tell you and attest that Bradley is every bit that tall. As a junior, this is his second year on varsity. He did break his wrist last season, so he didn't get to play. So this has been his first full year. Talking about last week when Bradley had a stellar game, he said it was the preparation that put him in position for success, and he also said he's learned a lot from senior Devin Thomas. He doesn't have many things that he does outside of football. He does plan to play uh, football in college. He told me he's had some family go to OU, and certainly that is a school that he is eyeing. He made sure to give a shout-out to his mom, his dad, and his stepmom, and I'll tell you this. If I could come up with one word for Bradley Stanier, it would be focus. Next up, I got to meet with standout defensive lineman Ty Hohenberger. While Ty isn't quite as tall as Stan here, he's still a big guy, as you would expect being that nose tackle. Last week, we called out Ty's name throughout the game, and he was simply everywhere, controlling the line of scrimmage from that nose tackle position. He was seemingly in on just about every single play. Now, Ty is also at the top in tackles for this stout grapevine defense, and he's looking forward to to the challenge here tonight with Arlington Heights team who runs the ball quite a bit. Being that his job is to stop the run, he's certainly looking forward to the challenge. Devin Thomas was mentioned once again as a leader for Ty, and he's also said that Brady Wagner and Harrison Hackbarth has been two seniors that he has leaned on this year. This is his second year on varsity. He's also a wrestler, Jacob, so education is important to Ty as well. He also mentioned OU as a possible destination. He told me his grandfather owns a leather company, so he's thinking about sales in the future. Uh, but right now, he's focused clearly on Arlington Heights. He wanted me to give a shout out to his parents and his grandparents as they watch each and every game. As always, I enjoyed my brief conversations with both players. And Jacob, with a team like Arlington Heights, both Ty and Bradley should see a lot of action come their way here tonight. They definitely should. And we talk, we've talked about how this is going to be a game where Grapevine is, as they typically like to, they're going to want to lean on their defense to slow down this Arlington Heights uh, ground attack. The good thing about for in this game for both of these teams is they both found out on Saturday that they had locked up playoff spots in this year's uh, 5A Division II playoffs thanks to the Heritage win over Northside. That locked in the playoff spot for both teams, and tonight is just about seeding. So at this time, we're going to take you to this week's edition of Carly's Corner, and that is brought to you by our friends at Mentier Real Estate. So here's Carly's Corner with Carly Isbell. It's Friday night football, but tonight I'm having trouble saying go Mustangs. Most of you don't know this about me, but I spent my four years of high school at Arlington Heights. So tonight, we are going to have a little fun in Carly's Corner. The Mustangs take on the Yellow Jackets, and I'm going to share some traditions of Heights when I attended school there just four years ago. While Grapevine says, go Mustangs, one thing to say. And the Grapevine football team yells, Freedom! Heights has a motto as well, which is, sing em. When you say this, it's a must that you throw up the hand signal that goes along with it. Go Yellow Jackets! Sing em. Both have homecoming, and it is a big deal for both schools, with parades through the city of neighborhoods and excitement all week. Just like the exterior stadium lights at Mustang Stadium are lit up in blue after a victory, the school tower at Arlington Heights is lit up after every football and sports game win. But my all-time favorite, and one that may not be comparable to anything at Grapevine, would have to be when the seniors get to climb up to the tower and sign their name and graduation year. 
I've mentioned a lot of grapevine traditions this season already, and I've grown close to the Mustang community through my work with Tradio. What was the message that Coach gave y'all during halftime? He just said, you know, we got to come out in the second half strong. You know, that first half, I mean, we were up, but it was definitely not. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carly Isbell. I am the host of the evening uh, for the evening for the Coach DeBest Show. I'd like to go ahead and thank Feed Store Barbecue for having us tonight. But wherever I may roam, I will always call it home. It's the place I love the best, dear old A-H-H-S. Sing them. Texas, the time to step up is now during Classic Truck Month. To remain number one in America, we're racing with grit to offer you more than anyone. New Silverados, an unprecedented 10 grand off MSRP. That's $37,000 for a new Silverado. Don't settle. Only Classic Chevrolet offers 10 grand off on the largest selection of Silverados in America. Over 300 on the ground. This is Texas. This is Classic. Claim 10 grand off before this one-time opportunity is gone. Compass Church is for you. Join us each week to experience great music, a message that applies to your everyday life, as well as programming for your kids and students to engage on their level. Learn more at compass.church. Welcome back to Farrington Field, the AC Pro's pregame show here on Mustang Friday night. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio here with you. The broadcast, of course, being sent out, powered by Tradio as both teams are getting ready to come on the field. The Heights Yellow Jackets are starting to come out of the locker room. The Mustangs are running out of BAM and onto the field on their side of the, of the field tonight here at Farrington. The crowd for this game, I think, is going to be a lot lower than maybe it would have would have been in normal circumstances because of the other big sporting event going on in Arlington tonight. What, what sporting event is that? That would be game one of the World well, Series. Baseball between the still Texas, going on? Yes, between the Texas oh, Rangers and goodness. the Arizona Diamondbacks. Go White Sox. So I imagine a lot of people are at home watching that tonight. Um, so we may not have as big a crowd as we might normally have here. But we're here with you to give you this game. It is an important one. Both of these teams have clinched playoff spots. Now they are coming in fighting for offensive positioning. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and give you the starting lineups for the Grapevine Mustangs as uh, both teams have come out onto the field. We're waiting for, for the possible national anthem. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball as there has been a change tonight across the offensive front for Grapevine. You still have uh, Ryan uh, number 64, Ryan Knight at left tackle. You still have Daniel Campos, at, or left tackle, I should say. Daniel Campos, number 71 at left guard. Tonight, however, they've moved Hunter Caudill, the sophomore, from the right side of the line into the center position, and that is because of the matchup against a big, strong defensive line from Arlington Heights. So Hunter Caudill will get the start at center. Bergen Weir, number 70, the, the junior at right guard. And Ben Williams back from the injured list, having gotten hurt the week of the Argyle game with a collarbone injury. He's now back tonight and starting at right tackle. Uh, the rest of the offense, uh, the skill positions, and, of course, the quarterback spot. We do have, of course, the senior, Harrison Hackbarth, at quarterback starting for you tonight. Your two primary running backs are going to be Demontres Dunn, number four, and Connor Bell, number 24. Your starting wide receivers are Darius Burns and Will Matheny, number 10 and number two, or number two and number 10, respectively, and Brady Wagner, the senior, number 22 at tight end, and of course, the slot guy and big play home run hitter, number 21, Rondale Carradine, who will be playing out of the slot and also will motion into the backfield and be a part of the running game as well. Uh, Rondale last week was kept under wraps, really, by a pretty good effort by a Wyatt Chaparral defense. Uh, had a couple of chances, had at least one shot down the field with him in the passing game. Couldn't quite connect. We'll see if that uh, are able to connect tonight. Had a similar one with Demontrez Dunn, but we'll see if the Mustangs can connect tonight. On the defensive side of the ball, for Grapevine, you have the starting defensive front. Your ends are Junior Bradley Stanier, and the Jack slash defensive end are is sophomore number 11, Tatum Evans. Your two starting defensive tackles, the senior, number 99, Devin Thomas, and number 95, Ty Hohenberger. And the captains are now meeting at midfield tonight. Representing the visiting Great Mine Mustangs, Captain number one, Bryson Davis, number three, Gerard Martin, number seven, Colby Eckert, number 19, Lakin Towers. For the Yellow Jackets, 
Captain, number 17, Robert Carpenter. Number 25, Garrett Wright. Number 35, Alexis Gonzalez. Number 55, Jesse Gates. You heard the PA announcer announcing the captains. The only negative about Farrington Field is we are pretty far back from the action and also looking through some tinted glass. So there's the numbers this year for Rondell Carradine and DeMontra has done on offense. They have been the two young men that have powered things primarily on the offensive side of the ball. Rondell both through the receiving and the run game and DeMontra is on the ground. So as we were saying on the defensive side of the ball, your defensive line, Bradley Stanier, Ty Hohenberger, Devin Thomas, You'll also see uh, Tatum Evans mixing in as both a defensive end and a linebacker. Luke Gormley at one of the starting linebackers and the senior captain. Number 19, Leighton Towery in the middle. Your second, your starters in the secondary, number one, Bryson Holmes, number 37, Maddox Stanley. Number nine, Moody Bra uh, Brady Boozer. And right now we're gonna go down for the national anthem here at Farrington Field. Carrying the Texas flag, Cadet Chief Petty Officer Natalia Capaz. And carrying our National Cup, Cadet Lieutenant Seth Pack. The Arlington Heights Junior ROTC Color Guard, led by Commander Lance Fisher and Senior Chief Reggie Williams. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. All rise for the playing of our national anthem by the Spirit of the Hill Marching Band. Excellent job by the Arlington Heights Yellow Jacket Marching Band on our national anthem. As we are that much closer to getting things started here tonight from Farrington Field. Again, the big thing tonight when we talk about playoff positioning is the opportunity to host a playoff game in the by district round of the 5A Division II playoffs. This district in 4-5A Division II will be matched up with 3-5A, of course. And that is the district that currently is being led by Argyle. And the Argyle Eagles most likely going to take that district this year. So it's going to be right now kind of a fight, it seems, between Lake Dallas, who Grapevine defeated in the bye district round last year. Lake Dallas is an improved team this year. They're 7-1, and 3-1 and one in district, tied with Denton High, who is 3-1 and one in district, but only 4-4 four and four on the season. And then you have Frisco Emerson right now, who's played one more game at 7-2. and two. And they're three and two in district play, so there's going to be a bit of a fight. But you want to have that game at home in week one of the playoffs. You always want to play at home if you can, and this is the game that's going to set that up for them. They get the ball first. Arlington Heights won the toss, deferred to Grapevine, so they have to take the ball, otherwise they kick off twice. They don't want to do that. So we get to see this Grapevine offense right off the bat. It is Rondell Carradine and Bryson Davis back deep to receive the kickoff for the Grapevine Mustangs. And lining things up to kick off is number 19, Rudy Redigan. Uh, He's also listed as a tight end on the roster. And we're about ready to go from Farrington Field. And the kick is away. It's high, short pooch kick. And the fair catch is going to be called for at the 24-yard line. But the Mustangs will get it at the 25 as 
They went with the pooch kick probably to stay away from that home run hitting ability. We've seen Rondale and Bryson both this year have big kickoff returns for the Mustangs. Yeah, we've seen a few teams mistakenly kick to one of those two two guys. And the one guy you really want to stay away from is Bye Bye Carradine. He didn't get to say bye bye last week, but typically he certainly does at least once or twice a game. Well, he got to say bye bye on the opening kickoff last week. Well, I guess that was last week, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it? It was. See, I, can, I can't remember <laughs> yesterday, Jacob. That was last week. So the Mustangs tonight, of course, in their road whites, going with the red pants this evening. I love this look. We know the leadership council uh, comes up with the uniform every week. This is a great look here tonight. Both Connor Bell and Demontra's Dunn in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to Dunn, and he's got room up the middle. And breaking and driving the pile, he's going to have a first down or close to it on the first gain. Across the 35, I think they're going to mark him at the 35-yard line, so it'll be a nine-yard gain on first down for Demontra's Dunn. Man, I'll tell you, Brady Wagner is so nasty at that tight end spot. He was still cleaning up people way downfield, got himself a little pancake at the end of the run. That's the kind of tight end you want blocking for you in the run game. This time they're going to go with just a single back. Done. He's going to get the handoff again, going over the left side, going to have that first down out across the 38 to about the, and they're going to mark it at the 38. It'll be officially a three-yard gain. Just a and quick a little down. trap pull. From, from the backside, offensive line pulling around to pull up the linebackers and get you a couple quick yards. This defensive front for the Heights Yellow Jackets are led by a, so by a sophomore and a, and a freshman. Number two, Carter James, and number three, Kanan James. Snap back. It'll be a little quick option pitch out to Carradine, trying to get the corner. He gets couple of yards before he's knocked out of bounds. They're gonna see where they mark him. They're gonna mark him at the 40. It'll be officially a two yard gain on the speed option. Arlington Heights defense played that really well. They strung it out well. They had two guys playing Carradine, but they also had the quarterback sewed up and they took away the dive play. So they played that as perfect as you could on that triple option look. The two senior linebackers, number 10, Kellen Petrie, and number 16, Alberto Chavoya, are also a big part of this defense for Heights. They are number Chavoya is number one on the team and tackles for loss. Petrie is number three on the team. Split back set on first down. Snap back, speed option, look again. And this time Hackbarth breaks a tackle and he's gonna get some yardage out past the 40. Great job by Hackbarth to stay on his feet as they covered the pitch man really well that time. And he broke a tackle and actually got about two, three yards on the play. Really, really good individual effort by Hackbarth to stay on his feet. He's, he's not a little quarterback by any means. He's got legs like tree trunks. He's not an easy person to bring down. And now you've got yourself set up in third and medium. Not too bad for, for that first drive. This is where they, they don't mind being here. Third and six for the Mustangs as they'll go three wide here on third down. It will be done in the backfield. Hackbarth looking to throw. Fires one out to the far side. He's got a man wide open and that pass is caught. Unfortunately, Carradine couldn't stay on his feet. If he was able to stay on his feet, he would have scored from 60 yards out. But it's still a first down nonetheless as they get the ball to the Heights 35 yard line. It's a gain of 23 yards. And you, you have to think that's either a great scheme or blown coverage because Carradine was <laughs> all by himself yeah. in the back of the defensive backfield. Great throw by Hackmarth, putting it on the money. No way that wasn't nice a blown little coverage. Play. Yeah. First down play action this time. Hackmarth steps up, he fires one deep down the middle of the field and it's just off the hands of number two, Darius Burns, trying to hit Burns on a go route up the seam. Is that a flag? I think I see a flag down at the one-yard line. There was line. a lot of contact there by was. the DB on that. That is a beautiful throw by Hackmar, who had people all around him. One guy was swiping at his arm. He, he held in tight in the pocket, delivered a perfect throw. I think we're going to get a pass interference it's here. A, technically, is a defensive hold is what the call yeah, was. I mean, he was all over. Regardless, so it's, a, it's a big penalty. Ten, remember, in high school and college, defensive holding is a 10-yard penalty. So it's 10 yards to the 25 and an automatic first down. So here we see, and we haven't seen Grapevine do this here this season, is open it up this early in the game, but they, they certainly saw something in this defensive backfield that they want to take advantage of. First and 10 at the 25 of Heights. Done in the backfield with Hackbarth. 
Snap back, handoff to Dunn. He's got room up the middle, lowering his shoulder, pushing forward, getting some help from his teammate Daniel Campos, pushing the pile, and they move it all the way to the 17-yard line, a gain of eight yards. Excellent job by number 72, Ben Williams, who comes around and makes a couple of key blocks and actually had a man blocking all the way down to inside the 10-yard line on that play. I love that sort of motor from an offensive line. And welcome back, Ben welcome Williams. Welcome back, yes, sir. After being out since, the, since Argyle week with an injury, and he's back in the lineup tonight starting at right tackle. Second and two at the 17th. Snap back, Connor Bell gets it this time. He's got room. He'll have the first down inside the 15-yard line. Tackle made around the ankles that time by number 21, Lamont Mantia, the junior defensive back. But it's still a first down for Connor Bell. And once again, led upfield by Williams and the tw uh, the big tight end, number 22, Brady Wagner. And those aren't two, two fellas that are, aren't too hard to run behind, I think. No. You know, just get behind them and let them pave the way. And that was, again, as we talked about in the pregame, one of the, the main reasons for the switch in offensive line this week is to get more size and strength up front. First and 10 at the 14. Snap back, handoff to Bell, going over the left side. He breaks the tackle. He's inside the five and almost gets in. Going to be first and goal for Connor Bell. He was tripped up at the last moment by a Heights defender who looks like he's still down on the field. Yes, I think the Heights defender who made the tackle, the touchdown saving tackle, is the one who's down around the five-yard line. Great run by Connor Bell right over left guard. Broken ankle tackle and got down to the three, set up first and goal. Yep, the, the, the left sideline crashes down. You have uh, Ben Williams once again. He's playing right guard, by the way. He pulls around from the right. He's able to get a nice kick out, nice cut up, good vision by Connor, Connor Bell to get up in there and get down close to that end zone. And with the injury, we'll go ahead and take a quick break. This is Mustang Friday night on Tradio. Yes. First and goal for the Mustangs at the three after the t after the injury timeout. Two backs in the backfield to hand off to Dunn. He is inside the five and walks it into the corral for the touchdown. Demontrez Dunn punches it in from three yards out, and the Mustangs take the opening possession and put a touchdown on the board. Ian Hatton was a part of that. The other tight end it is so great in run blocking. He's got his guy into the end zone. You had Ben Williams, you had Brady Wagner. I think the entire offensive line, Hunter Cadell, everybody was in the end zone. It's a party for the Grapevine Mustangs drive number one. Hayden Rhodes on for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up. The kick is good. 8.18 to go in the first quarter of the Mustangs drive the field on their opening possession. They lead 7-0. This first quarter brought to you by our friends at Stacy Furniture and Design. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio, and this is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. For over 40 years, the Stacy family has been proud to serve North Texas with exceptional furniture that combines comfort and style. To thank you for shopping with our family, we're celebrating with huge savings during Stacy's anniversary sale. Right now, save 50% or more on quality furniture for every room in your home. Shop Stacy's Sleep Solutions and receive the royal treatment. Buy today and get a king mattress for the price of a queen. It's all on sale during Stacy's anniversary celebration. Remember, when you're shopping at Stacy's, you're shopping, shopping with, with family, family and you're not burning money. The Mustangs take the opening possession and they go 74 yards on that drive. They do it in three minutes and 42 seconds and the kickoff is away from Hayden Rhodes. It's gonna go about eight yards deep and 
hit the turf for a touchback as Rhodes booted that one. You mentioned that wind, Tim. There is a cold front moving through the Metroplex this evening, and right now that wind is coming out of the north pretty strong as the flags in the south end zone here at Farrington Field are standing at attention right now. So a big wind at the back for whoever's going towards the south end zone. That's true, and Hayden already is going to kick it into the end zone more times than not. So right. not a surprise to see the wind give him a little extra boost there, but he doesn't need it. We know that for sure. Three minutes and 42 seconds on that opening drive for the Mustangs, and they used a mix of the pass and run more so than we normally do with DeMontra's done finishing off the drive from three yards out. They're going to go spread on first down. Pass out to the near side. It is caught and dropped immediately as on the tackle that time was number eight, Ryan Hamilton. Pass caught by number four, Ryan White. He is one of the starting wide receivers on this team. Of course, the starting quarterback for the Heights. Uh, Yellow Jack is his, his senior number 11, Allen Banks. They'll have a mix in the run and the pass game. The leading rusher is a true freshman by the name of Carson James. Snap back, little wide receiver screen. Caught, tackles being broken, and nice run that time. Good individual effort by the receiver, number 23. That was Deshaun Long who broke a couple of tackles and got it out to the 33. Yeah, for all the talk about how this team was gonna come in and run the ball and try to run down your throat, they've come out with two pass plays and Grapevine throwing the ball early as well. This this game not really panning out early as we expected. And I think part of that is the fact that I believe Allen Banks is more of a pocket passer than he is a runner. Snap back, handoff on third down, and it's gonna be a first down carry by number 34. That is Latrell Brooks, the senior, uh, the senior running back. Brooks is second on the team behind the freshman, number nine, Carson James. Brooks coming into tonight, 246 yards, a couple of touchdowns, averaging over five and a half yards a carry. First and 10 at the 37 yard line, and now whistles blow and flag comes out. We're gonna have a false start on the Yellow Jackets. This, uh, notice the Yellow Jackets are coming out in an interesting little four wide formation two sets of stacks on the same side. Yeah. I mean, they, they do that, it seems to me, to get the get some more DBs out of the box so they can run the ball, right? Spread you out to run the ball up the middle. And they Their are offensive running. line is very athletic. They're pulling and trapping and doing all of those things. And they are going spread here now in first and 15 as it's back at the 32. And it's gonna be another wide receiver screen. Catch is made, but the Mustangs cover it well. They had number 23, Deshaun Long, kind of in jail. It's going to be a short gain out to about the 34-yard line. So they get a couple of the penalty yards back, gain of only two on the play. How about Bradley Stanier? Goes from rushing the quarterback at defensive end to rushing out and making the tackle on the wide receiver screen. That, that's just crazy athleticism to be 6'6 and flying around the field like that. Heights goes in a split back set this time out of the shotgun, snap back, and looks like a busted play as James is rolling out and he's gonna get pushed out of bounds for a loss. Something was a miscommunication there because he looked like he was turning to hand off and nobody was there and Banks had to run out of bounds to the sideline and I think lost a yard. Yeah, their left guard pulled around like it was supposed to be a run to the right side, just no joy on the handoff, so the quarterback does what he has to do and tries to get some yards, but no good there, now third and long. Doesn't seem like this is something Arlington Heights wants to be in. And now they're gonna go empty on third and long. Third and about 13. Third and 14 maybe, snap back. Rolling to his right, quick throw over the middle. Is that intercepted? No, it's on the ground almost though, as Maddox, not Maddox Stanley, uh, Major Heck nearly came up with a diving interception off the Allen Banks pass. Major Heck making a play on the ball right away. I mean, he's always gonna make his presence known in these football games. And this is a big game for Grapevine. You can see the energy from this defense, and you can see some of these seniors really stepping up tonight and leading the way to get that second seed. So the Mustangs get a stop on their first possession, one first down and then a punt and a high snap, but able to get corralled, almost blocked, but it did affect the punt into this wind as it gets knocked down by that wind. Little bit of a roll, but not much. It's gonna be down at the Grapevine 44 yard line only going to be a 24-yard punt. Now you talked about the wind, and the wind certainly played a factor in that one. He kicked it nice and high, but the wind stopped it immediately. It just kind of hit a wall, and now Grapevine comes out with great field position right here near the 50-yard line at their own 44. 
So the Mustangs, who drove 76 yards on the 74 yards on their first possession and got a touchdown, are now back on the field. First and 10. Dunn in the backfield with Hackbarth on first down. And play action. Little screen out to the far side. Caught around the end up the far sideline and out of bounds. Nice catch and run by Darius Burns, number two. Nice block out in front of him as well. Was that was that Carradine? That I think was Carradine. Was blocking for him. And you love when Carradine gets a, gets involved in the blocking game. He does such a good job as all these receivers do. But he's a guy that likes to catch and run. You like to see him blocking for his teammates like that. Carradine with that block, helping Spring Burns for a 16-yard gain into Heights territory. First and ten at the 40. Just over six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Snap back, play action, looking to throw again. Going to fire one deep down the middle. That pass is caught inside the 15 and tripping up and losing his feet but getting a huge gain again is Carradine as he went right up the seam that time and a beautiful throw from Harrison Man, Hackbarth. Harrison looks so poised and calm in the pocket. He's making his reads. He went from one to two that time, came back to that backside seam. Beautiful throw. And tonight you see the Mustangs employing a lot more play action and passing attack here in this first quarter. That was a gain of 28 on that pass to Carradine, who he and uh, Hackbarth have connected twice now for big games. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah. I feel like they've been leaving this in the pocket, Jacob. First and 10 at the 12. Snap back, another play at and dropping back. Hackbarth has to get out of the pocket, and, and now he turns it up the sideline. He's got room inside the five and gets knocked out. Harrison Hackbark wow. with his best Josh Allen impersonation. Holy moly. Escapes the pass rush when the when the pocket started to collapse. Looked like he was going to get knocked out of bounds, but was able to tiptoe the sidelines, turn it up, and gets all the way down to the four yard, the five yard line for a gain of seven. Love that. Love that he was able to get out of that early trouble and get up the sidelines, had the presence of mind to stay in bounds and get some yards. Wow. Second and three at the five. Bell and Dunn in the backfield. Hand off to Bell going over the right side and he walks it into the corral. Connor Bell goes in untouched from the five yard line and the Mustangs have scored on their first two possessions. Ben Williams and Ian Haddon once again, they simply opened up a massive hole and Connor was able to ring that bell. Well done and the Mustangs, Two parties in the end zone on two drives tonight. They have come out on fire. Our executive producer, Trey Bell, very happy. He's Connor's dad. As Hayden Rhodes is now on for the extra point. Snap down, kick is up, and this one is good. 5.08 to go in the first quarter. The Mustangs have scored touchdowns on each of their first two possessions. They lead Heights 14 to nothing. This is Mustang Friday Night presented by Tradio. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Church is for you. Join us each week to experience great music, a message that applies to your everyday life, as well as programming for your kids and students to engage on their level. Learn more at compass.church. Back here at Farrington Field, the Mustangs lining up the kick. Rhodes with the wind at his back, boots this one into the end zone about two yards deep, and it's going to be returned. Out to the 10 and an open field hole up to the 35, the 40, out past midfield, still on his feet. Inside the 20, the 10, and he will score, but there is a flag. There is a flag right there. Hit the guy that was leading out blocking, think he's going to get either a block in the back or some sort of a hole here. This thing is going to come all the way back. A spectacular return, though, by the senior defensive back, number one, Keith Gidry who returned that 102 yards, finding the hole, cutting to it, and stepping out of a couple of tackle attempts, and then just outrunning the defense. But 
a big chunk of this is coming back because of the penalty. So a huge break right there for the Mustangs, who's, there, you know, oddly, their special teams have been on point. It is a hold is what the referee calls. And it was at the 44-yard line, so it's still going to be good field position. It's going to be end up being a, about a 34-yard officially return as he returned it from a couple of yards deep. It so sure solid field position, but yep. still, that was six points. Gidry was somebody you and I were talking about during the break as one of the keys out of their defensive backfield. The Heights coming out of a split back shotgun set here on first and 10. Snap is back, handoff, trying to go over the left side and not much room there, a yard at most for number 34, Latrell Brooks, as the Mustang defense collapsed around him right as he got to the line of scrimmage. And of course, Devin Thomas, the guy on the tackle. Well, Devin Thomas, you know, he's the engine that runs this defensive line, which has been stout all season long. Everybody on defense says they look to Devin for leadership, so always expect great things coming out of him. Second and nine for the J Yellow Jackets. Quick snap, quick throw out to the far side. Pass is caught, but the tackle is made immediately by Ryan Hamilton as that was number, thir number 13, Enrique Manzano, on the catch. Tried to go quick there with a little. We've seen that from Heights, running a little bit of tempo in this first quarter. That time they tried a quick snap, quick throw, and it did get them a few yards out that's, to the 40. That's a great open field tackle, I'll tell you what, because if, if you miss that tackle, that's a lot of room to run down the sidelines, but great open field tackle that time. Third and four for the Yellow Jackets now. They go four wide, snap back, play action, quick pass over the middle, and that pass is caught. Nice job, that was a good throw that time by Allen Banks as he, he saw the defender coming, trying to cut, undercut the route and he threw it low and the receiver Manzano made the catch. Yeah, protected his receiver, threw, throws it low and inside, the DB coming high and outside, perfect throw by the quarterback. Gain of eight to the 48, handoff to the freshman who gets popped after about a yard or two. And that's the first time we've seen the freshman, number nine, Carson James, the leading rusher on this team, with a touch tonight. And they actually give him forward progress to the grapevine 49. Well, Leighton Towery came over, and that's not the guy you want smacking you like that. He came over with a big-time hit. Welcome to the game, is what he said. Monzano, number 13, with those two catches. He is the leading receiver for this Yellow Jacket squad. Snap back. Rolling to his left is Allen, and now he's under pressure. He gets rid of it and overthrows. He had a man, he had his receiver kind of in the near side flat here, but the pressure, he just let that one kind of sail. He had, looked like Manzano on the near side, or check that. That was 23, not 13. That was Deshaun Long, who he had open in the flat, but just overthrew him. Yeah, it's really tough when you have some big old defenders right in your face to see what's going on downfield. I think he did the best thing he could have done in that situation and just get rid of the football. That'll set up a third and seven as they go four wide again. Banks in the shotgun with the freshman James. Snap back. Banks looks to throw. He fires one deep and nobody home. It looked like he was trying to hit the slot receiver. That is the leading receiver, as we talked about, Enrique Manzano. And that pass just sailed over his head incomplete. Looked like maybe a miscommunication. He was expecting maybe the seam route. The, the receiver cuts up on a curl route. Like you said, nobody home. The ball just falls haplessly to the ground. You can see, though, with this offense, at least with uh, with Banks at quarterback, how they're trying to run some tempo, and they're still mixing. You know, while he's not much of a running threat, as we've seen so far, they're doing a lot of things that you could see why they've had some success on offense this year. Snap back on the punt, and it's up into this wind. It is high and short again. It kicks up and takes a great vine roll, and it's down at the 28-yard line of the Mustangs, only a 21-yard punt going into this wind. You gotta like that if you're Grapevine, you keep getting this nice field position thanks to the wind. Your defense is playing great so far. Special teams obviously gave up the chunk of those yards on the return. Luckily, it wasn't the touchdown. They got that penalty, but now you've got decent field position to start your third drive, and so far, You've shown offensively you're not having any issues out here. Yeah, the Mustang defense taking advantage of that break of the penalty on the kickoff return. First and 10 at the 28, snap back. Harrison with the pass, wide receiver screen, caught up the sideline and almost breaking that was Will Matheny, number 10. Great block by Darius Burns out in front, but it's still a gain of 11 and a first down. I love this. Now we've got three different guys involved in the pass game. We've got three different receivers involved in the blocking game in the pass game. I love what they're doing, spreading the ball around. Everyone's getting a taste. 
Mustangs 2-17 to go here in the first quarter. As the Mustangs leap 14-0 and driving for more, first and 10. Snap back, speed option. Connor keeps it this time, gets hit after only a gain of about a yard. That was that speed option to the short side of the field, and there were enough defenders that time, and it looked like the defender he was looking at started to commit to Carradine. He tried to cut up, but that was good pursuit by the defensive line on the inside. Carter James, the freshman, did a good job pursuing from yeah, inside. They, they've been really covering that really well tonight, and Harrison that time just did what he could, get as many yards as you can on that. Do not pitch the ball into trouble. Second and nine now at the 40. Bell and James in the back. No, it's Carradine and uh, Dunn in the backfield. I'm sorry. Speed option again. Carradine takes it and nearly breaks it. Great open field ankle tackle. Probably a touchdown saving tackle that time. I didn't see who exactly it was, but I did see that number 10, Kellen Petrie, was one of the two guys right there around Carradine's feet that saved the first down for the moment. Petrie's got a, a little fan base down here. They've all got his, his T-shirt, jersey, sweatshirt on down here. So, you know, he's a ball player for this Arlington Heights team. Third and a yard for the Mustangs at their own 47. Snap back, handoff to Dunn, and he's not going to get there. Bit of a high snap that time from Cottle. Threw off the timing a little bit, and great penetration by the Heights defensive line. They hit Dunn right at the line of scrimmage, and the Mustangs being up 14 and with the wind at their back, I think they're going to go ahead and try and, and go ahead and punt. Yeah, go ahead and pin them deep. You know, try to get this inside the 10 if you can, maybe inside the 5, some sort of a coffin corner punt. We expect he'll run a little bit to the right here and then let it go. Again, that freshman, number two, Carter James, rolling to his right is Rhodes. He boots it, winded his back, and it's going to go out of bounds. It'll just be a question of where it's marked, mm -hmm. not the punt that he wanted. They're going to, they're still coming up. They're going to mark this out at the 28. So. Not a really good punt that time from Hayden Rhodes as he was trying to see if he could get it towards the corner and it just didn't didn't happen. That's obviously what he wanted to do, right? But, you know, when you're running too, I think, I'm not a punter and I've never done it, but I, I assume when you're running a little bit to your right and you kick like that, the ball's just going to kind of drift to the right. That's what it did. Only a 25-yard punt. Have you ever punted, Jacob? Very little. Okay. Well, then you know more than me because I've punted <laughs> very zero. Jackets take over their own 28-yard line. It's just 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter. As they go split back on first down. Snap back, handoff to Latrell, and he yeah, he's nowhere going. Mustangs gang tackle him that time. Devin led by Thomas. Devin Thomas and Brady Boozer. As Latrell Brooks, number 34, just had nowhere to go. They give him forward progress of a yard, and that's going to be the final play of the first quarter. So the Mustangs come out strong and fast. They score touchdowns on each of their first two possessions, and we go to quarter number two with Grapevine leading Arlington Heights by a score of 14 to nothing. For Tim Smith, I'm Jacob Dedamore from Champion Sports Radio, and this is Mustang Friday Night, powered by Tradio. Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith back here with you from historic Farrington Field in downtown Fort Worth. The Mustangs taking on the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets. And as we go to quarter number two, they lead by a score of 14 to nothing. And the Jackets have the ball at their own 29-yard line. The win now at their back as they face a second and nine. And throwing the ball around like they have here tonight. Let's see if that helps them out a little bit. Tight three-wide formation here. Snap back to Allen. Pass is incomplete. 
I believe was that was Leighton Tower that knocked that down. Yeah, that, that was Devin Thomas, oh, I think, my bad, actually. My mistake. Yeah, Devin Thomas got his there paws go. up and knocked down the pass of Allen Banks. You know, one thing about Banks I have noticed is he we don't have heights and weights listed for Arlington Heights, but he does not seem like the tallest of quarterbacks He doesn't seem there. very, very uh, tall in stature, no. Now, Devin Thomas is not exactly a tall a tall guy either, but he does have that ability to get up in the air. Third and nine, Banks drops back, fires one towards the near sideline, and it is caught. Or is it? No, no, he bobbled it going out of bounds. Almost a great throw and catch to Enrique Manzano, but he couldn't hang on. And But that might have been the best throw of the night so far from Allen Banks as he dropped that right over the top of the defense. It was a really nice throw. Dropped it right in the bucket, as they say. You Should gotta, have been You got to hold on to that. Yeah. You got to hold on. And he finally did catch it, but he was about 10 yards out of bounds by the time he held yeah, it that, in. That's one of those where the receiver needs to help his quarterback out because that was a beautiful Absolutely. throw. Got to catch the ball like But it looks like, like we had a personal foul roughing the passer penalty against the great by defense. I did not see that flag. And mm-hmm. so instead of a, forcing a punt, the Mustangs give up a first down with the penalty. Oh, we don't like that, do we? We don't no. like those 15-yarders that keep drives alive. That moves it out to the 44. Handoff coming around the left side. Nice run by the freshman. Number nine, Carson James. At, or is that? Uh, yes. Nope. Yeah, that is Carson James. Sorry. Nice run over the right side. Gets about six yards out to midfield. Is. Maybe the best run of the night so far out of the running game. Maddox Stanley really drove him into the ground on that tackle, and he had to come out for a minute. Welcome to varsity football. Hand off going over the left side this time. There's room to run, and still on his feet, almost breaking that as we had a new running back in that time. That was number 22, Hank Hayden, who took that handoff, went over the left side as they kind of collapsed that side of the ball. And he got the first down, down to the Grapevine 43-yard line. Yeah, he showed some power. Very seldom do you see a guy like Major Heck get run over, and that's exactly what we just saw. Hand off again, this time to Latrell Brooks. He's got it over the left side as the Arlington Heights offensive line has got something going on this possession. Another big carry, five yards to the 38. Now all of a sudden, this run game is, is becoming a little bit more dominant than what we had seen in the first quarter. Second down at the Grapevine 38-yard line. Brooks in the backfield. Handoff going over right guard. Gets about four yards before he's brought down by Tatum Evans. Just short of the first down, about a yard shy, looks like. Maybe two two yards shy at the 36. Third and two, certainly they're going to be comfortable in this situation as they can throw or run. And they're going to go split back out of the shotgun this time. And they're going to throw out of it. Pass to the far side. Pass is caught. The tackle is made eventually. Ryan Hamilton spun him around, and then I believe that was Maddox Stan- or no, excuse me, that was Major Heck who cleaned it up. And actually, they don't give him forward progress. Wow, they said he's just short, about a half yard of the first down. Sure looked like where he caught it. It was at, beyond the sticks, but great tackle. Hey, give credit sure to tackle give, outside. Yeah, give credit to Hamilton and Heck for forcing a fourth down and about a half a yard here. Snap back, hand off to James, and he's going to get the first down as he just powers his way forward inside the 35 down to the 30. So they convert on fourth down. And for the first time tonight, there's some rhythm and, you know, some pep in the step of this Heights offense. Yeah, they get a stop. They get grapevine offense off the field, punting the ball, and now they've got some momentum on offense. Trying to take advantage of that roughing the passer penalty that kept this drive going. Snap back to Allen. Fires one out to the near side, and that pass is caught. Nope, incomplete. He wasn't able to hang on. Great job that time by Darion Burns, who broke it up. Would have been a short gain, but because of the play of Darion Burns, it's no game. Yeah, Darion comes in and just really makes it so he can't hold on to the ball. I love that. It's hard to see from our angle. We don't have the replay, but we could see his hands in there trying to get that ball out of there, and he does a good job of it. Second and 10 now at the Grapevine 30. Allen rolling to his right out of the shotgun. And now he's just going to take off and run and is not going to have much place to go as Maddox Stanley came up and made the hit after only a gain of two. He was looking downfield but couldn't find a receiver and just decided to tuck it and go, and Stanley stopped stopped him from any kind of a big game. Just a heck of a job by Maddox Stanley to recognize that play, string it out, and then come up and make the sure tackle. 
That's going to set up a third and eight now at the Grapevine 28-yard line. As they go three, four wide this time out of the shotgun. Snap is back to Allen. He fires a little screen set up, and it is going to be a first down. Boy, what a great power run that time by the freshman running back, number nine, Carson James. Looked like he might get stopped short as I think that was uh, Cooper Tower who tried to come up and make the tackle. But James, the freshman, was able to power his way through and get the first down. Yeah, he certainly didn't have that first down at first, and then he had some setup blocks, but just ran, you know, ran through a few tackles, and now it's, they, they've got something cooking here now in the red zone. First and 10 at the 19 after the nine-yard gain on the screen. Hand off to James this time, and he's got nowhere to go. Going to get forward progress of maybe two yards to the 17 as the tackle that time was made by Devin Thomas. Uh, Major Heck was up in there too, just coming right off the edge and grabbing an ankle. You I, can, I love to see what, what we see from this grapevine defense is so versatile and you see different guys coming from different areas, but particularly in this run game, it's hard to fix that blocking scheme. Well, and you can see why this freshman, Carson James, has been the leading rusher on this team. He's a big kid for a freshman. Handoff over the right side, tackles being broken, pile being pushed. Great run that time by Heights. They get it inside the 15. They're going to mark it at the 12 yard line. It'll be just short of a first down, but that was a very strong run that time by number 34, Latrell Brooks. That took everybody from Grapevine. We just saw player after player being peeled off that pile at the end. Heights going tempo after the five-yard gain. Third and three now for the Yellow Jackets at the Mustang 13-yard uh, line. Snap back, quick throw. Pass is caught, and it's going to be a first down. Nice block on the outside and a nice run after the catch by Deshaun Long as he carried a couple of grapevine defenders to the seven yard line, or the eight, to set up first and goal. He just refused to go down. Yeah. He just refused to be tackled. And I'm gonna take you as far as uh, as far as I can, as long as I can stay in bounds. What we're seeing well, you so can hear that wind. Boy. Yeah. You can hear it now. What we're seeing so far is when they get the ball in their hands, these uh, Heights players have a strong run. And this ball is gonna be going into the end zone as Latrell Brooks just picked his way through the line of scrimmage and took it in for the touchdown from eight yards out. And we got a ball game, Jacob. The yep. Yellow Jackets have decided to uh, to enter into the contest. They get a good defensive stand, get the ball back, and now a really nice drive all the way down the field, a little mix of run and pass, keeping this great line defense on their heels. And Heights took advantage of that very crucial penalty on the first set of downs. And as number 19, Rudy Riddigan, is on for the extra point. The snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 6.48 to go here in quarter number two. Do we have a flag? We do. We have some sort of flag. Let's see what we have here. This compass, this uh, quarter brought to you by our friends at Compass Church. As the extra point was good, but we have a penalty on the play. As Rudy Redigan punched that one through. Officials are still talking about it down there. Yeah, I don't know what could have happened for this much discussion. But here we go. Extra point is good. We have a personal foul against Grapevine on the play. So My guess is they went over the center. You simply can't go over possible. the center. That, yep. That's where the flag was thrown. Yep. My guess is that somebody went over the center, which you simply can't do. So we'll take a quick break. It's now 14 to seven Mustangs over the Heights Yellow Jackets. This is Mustang Friday night powered by Tradio. Back here at Farrington Field and the Yellow Jackets are lining it up from the Grapevine 45 to kick this thing off. And they do a little pooch kick with the wind at their back. It is caught by Carradine. He's going to the far side, trying to find a gap. He's up past the 15 and up near the 20. Good job coverage that time by the Yellow Jackets. Sure and was. It looked like Carradine might have had a little seam to get through, but really nice job by that coverage team from the Yellow Jackets. They mark him down, and that is a uh, – okay, they're going to mark him at the 19. I thought they were going to mark it at the 18, and I was like that would have been a horrid spot if that was at the 18, but 19 is close enough. Close enough, you say? Yeah. Okay, then. I'm not going to go into high school officials and their ability to spot the ball. It's bad. First and 10 for the Mustangs just inside their own 19-yard line. Snap is back. It's a handoff to – nope, speed option. Harrison Hackmark going to keep it. He's going to get tripped up. Great open field tackle 
by number 10, the senior linebacker, Kellen Petrie, as it looked like Hackbarth had a lot of room to run, but Petrie closed on him and got around the ankles of Hackbarth and dropped him for a loss of a yard. I think Hackbarth saw what you might have saw where he thought he had a lot of room to run. I thought he had the pitch man with Brady Wagner out in front. I thought he might have pitched it, but didn't feel comfortable with it, so he kept it. I think he, like you said, just saw, the, like we were saying, just saw the open grass. Thought he could get there, but Petrie was able to knock him down. Second and 11 now for the Mustangs. Six, just over six minutes to go. Handoff to, nope, play action and a busted play. And Hackbarth is able to make something out of nothing. Something was definitely wrong on that play. <laughs> yeah, I think Because he looked to throw and nobody was there. <laughs> I think that might have been one of those option plays and maybe the receiver's not on the same page. Yeah. They're blocking downfield. He looks to throw. There's no one to throw to. So then he just has to take off and out third and long. And we know Grapevine does not like to be in these situations with a 20 mile an hour win in their face. Certainly not favorable. But he was able to get four yards out of it. So it's third and seven now for the Mustangs. Three wide set. Snap is back, Hackbarth back to throw, pressure coming. He's going to uncork one to the far sideline, and that pass is caught. Carradine, what a great job, and now we're going to get a flag down. Carradine did a great job bodying off the defender to make the grab at the 40-yard line. We'll see what the penalty is. Carradine's not the biggest guy out there, and he's really a track star, but he, he knows body position, and he's really got those little intricacies of playing receiver. The pass was against Arlington Heights for a defensive hold on the play. Grapevine declines it. They'll take the yardage out to the 40-yard line. It was a gain of 18 yards for Carradine. And first and 10 for the Mustangs. Just over five minutes to go here in this first half as the Mustangs lead 14-7. to seven. Real strong throw into this wind yep. to be that accurate. He threw right through it. I mean, and the wind did hold that up. You could tell the effect of the wind on that throw, but Carradine did a great job bodying off the defender. Dunn in the backfield on first down. Snap back, and this time he'll hand it off to Dunn. Got some room up the middle, out past the 45 to the 47. Nice strong run by DeMontrez as the passing game had been effective enough that they'd kind of gone away from him in this running attack, but a nice strong run there. And led by number 71, Daniel Campos, who just gets up in there and leads the way for a nice little run there to get you set up in second and short. Now you can do anything you want. From their own 47 yard line, second and three. Snap is back, another handoff to DeMontrez. Got some room up the middle, he's gonna get the first down. Boy, Petrie, the linebacker, got around the ball and tried to rip it out of the hands of Dunn, but he covered up and got the first down at the 49 of Heights. Now Petrie seems to be everywhere, doesn't he? He's a leader on this team. I talked about it earlier, he's second on the team, he's third on the team in tackles for loss and sacks as a senior linebacker. First and 10 for the Mustangs now at the Yellow Jacket 49. Carradine coming in motion out of the slot. Hand off to Connor Bell over the right side. Room to move. Pyle gets pushed about four yards before he gets stood up as filling the hole that time was Petrie, number 10, and number 95, Key Brown, the senior defensive lineman. You gotta like getting that four or five yards on every first down, right? This is how Grapevine likes to stay ahead of the chains. Yep. This is how they, they like to orchestrate their drives. Mustangs will go with two backs, both Dunn and Bell in the backfield. Snap back, hand off to Dunn. Spins out of a tackle over the right side, still moving and is gonna get the first down. The strength of DeMontrez Dunn used a spin move just past the line of scrimmage and then pushed the ball forward and then a terrible spot by the line judge on the far side, marked him down at the 40. I'm sorry, but that's awful. He, yeah, he had the first down. Yeah. I mean, really nifty running up through there. Uh, they, they mark him a full yard short. Yeah, I mean, he got tackled at the 39. So third and one for the Mustangs now. At the 40, snap back, Dunn gets the ball. Gonna get it now, inside the 30, still on his feet, makes a move and then gets tripped up. But a nice run from DeMontrez Dunn on the tackle that time was Muhammad Nixon, the junior defensive back, but not before DeMontrez Dunn got 15 yards and a first. Yeah, uh, Ian Hatton and Ben Williams, who else? All the way down the field, just picking up blockers for him and Dunn weaving his way in and out of traffic. First and 10 is the Mustangs on the move. 2.20 to go here in the first half. Snap back, 
Another handoff to Dunn. has got room over the right side. Makes a man miss inside the 20. Still on his feet. Inside the 10. Still going. Another break it, broken tackle. Stiff arm trying to go and finally gets dragged down inside the 10 as number 12, Josiah Hunter, may have saved a touchdown. But what a run by Demontrez Dunn all the way down to the eight-yard line, a gain of 17. Dun, 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 dun. That's what it <laughs> sounds like. He's running people over, running through tackles. We say it every, almost every week now, Kyle Brandt, where are you? That was a heck of an angry run by Dunn. First and goal at the eight, Connor Bell in the backfield. As Dunn takes a, goes to the sideline for a play, snap back, hand off to Bell. He's got room inside the five and tripped up there as he got brought down just short of the end zone. Coming up to make the tackle that time was number 21, Lamont Montilla and he basically just threw his body into the legs of Connor Bell, but not before he got down to the three. And what a great run by Connor Bell. He shot through that hole. If it wasn't for that, that low tackle there on the ankle, I think he probably scores. Second and goal now at the three yard line. Shotgun snap, handoff to Dunn, and he's gonna get hit in the backfield this time. Great penetration by that defensive front of the Heights Yellow Jackets. It was led by Kellen Petrie, the senior linebacker, and that freshman defensive lineman, number two, Carter James, that we talked about earlier. Nowhere to go. They stopped up the middle. Everybody keying undone on that play. They knocked him down just inside the five. It's a loss of a yard and a half, and I think it was the Heights Yellow Jackets who took the timeout on defense with a minute to go here in the first half, trying to save, maybe save a little time for their offense, as the Mustangs now are gonna be facing a third and goal from just inside the five. So really, you know, I'm interested to see what the call is here. All op the running game has been effective, and actually we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break while they're in timeout. 14-7 Mustangs, this is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. For over 40 years, the Stacy family has been proud to serve North Texas with exceptional furniture that combines comfort and style. To thank you for shopping with our family. We're celebrating with huge savings during Stacy's anniversary sale. Right now, save 50% or more on quality furniture for every room in your home. Shop Stacy's Sleep Solutions and receive the royal treatment. Buy today and get a king mattress for the price of a queen. It's all on sale during Stacy's anniversary celebration. Remember, when you're shopping at Stacy's, you're, you're shopping, shopping with, with family, family and you're not burning money. Third and goal for the Mustangs, just inside the five. Snap back, it's a handoff to Bell. He's close, he's driving, and he is in for the touchdown. A Connor little... Bell pushes his way and pushes the pile, and the Mustangs have a two-score lead once again. Just a little bit of extra effort there for Connor Bell to, you know what, ring, ring that, that bell. bell. Well done. Offensive line, and Ty, we're just gonna say the entire line the tight ends, everybody had to do with that man, because that running game was effective all the way down. It the was. The hole was there, but it was the individual effort right there at the goal to line push. that Bell pushed the defenders into the end That's zone. That's that, those deep squats coming yep. into play, Jacob. Hayden Rhodes on for the extra point. Snap down. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 52 seconds to go in the first half. The Mustangs are back up 14. It's 21-7. to Grapevine, Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio. This is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. The time to step up is now during Classic Truck Month. To remain number one in America, we're racing with grit to offer you more than anyone. New Silverados, an unprecedented 10 grand off MSRP. That's $37,000 for a new Silverado. Don't settle. Only Classic Chevrolet offers 10 grand off on the largest selection of Silverados in America. Over 300 on the ground. This is Texas. This is Classic. Claim 10 grand off before this one-time opportunity is gone. Hi, I'm Russ Teeger. And I'm Laura Teeger. We're the proud owner. The Mustangs take that possession. Officially 81 yards for the touchdown as Connor Bell for the second time tonight punches it into the end zone. This one, this time from four yards out officially. And the Mustangs have restored their 14 point lead just under a minute to go. Here in the first half, 52 seconds to be exact, and Hayden Rhodes gonna kick this one off into this wind. And it is gonna be returnable. 
And his little pooch kick up around the 30, still on his feet out past the 35. Great return by Heights. Great blocking here on the near sideline. Allowed the returner, turner, number four, Ryan White, to dance up the sideline and get all the way out to the 45-yard line, a return of about 20 yards that time. And with two timeouts still left, actually it was Grapevine, they said, that took that timeout down here. I thought they had pointed towards Heights. So Arlington Heights still has three timeouts to work with, and they are at the – their own 45-yard line. Yeah, great field position. I was about to give them all the credit in the world for calling that timeout so they would have some time left figuring they had yeah. something planned for this. But, hey, it's it's certainly working out in their favor now with that win at their back. I, I know that I was watching the kicker, kicker in pregame. He wasn't necessarily kicking it very far, so I don't know what that distance is for them for field goal. They've got an interesting dual stack wide receiver sets. They throw the wide receiver screen. It's caught, but great job by the Mustang defense to just put the receiver in jail. Brady Boozer is the one who blew up a block and caused the play to get kind of screwed up. He didn't make the tackle, but he made the play, and it's no gain on first down. My question to Arlington Heights would be, why are we running that to the short side with of the, the field? With the wind at your back. And you have the wind at your back. I'm fine with the screen, but don't do it to the short side of the field where you have – four receivers and you have all the defenders for grapevine yeah. and they're so fast that they're going to lock you in you need to do a play like that to the wide side of the field if you want a chance of any yards i guess the thought on that is you've got three guys there as your three wide receivers in front of him to try and block so you're hoping he can open up a hole but with three different but with three mean, blockers in front of him but yeah it's so condensed it's, a, it it's like when you run the option to the short side it's such a condensed area Great job by the yeah, great job by the Mustangs though to attack that play, especially Brady Boozer who disrupted it, and his teammates cleaned up on the tackle and held him no gain. First time out was taken right there by the Yellow Jackets. Now 37 seconds left to go. I am a little surprised they ran that instead of maybe something downfield. Again, wind is this strong wind is at the back of the Yellow Jackets right now. Tee it high and let it fly is what I would say. And now they're going to go empty set and they're going to get a penalty because they lined up and had too many guys on the field a receiver came running off the field as they lined up at the line so that's going to be an illegal substitution penalty against the yellow jackets and back it up to the 40. Jacob there's a, a something concerning me in the stands there is a dinosaur roaming the stands a t-rex that looks to stand about five foot ten maybe but uh, he is terrorizing the students <laughs> James, or excuse me, Allen back to pass, fires one in the near sideline. It's caught, and immediately he's hit as Maddox Stanley came up and made the initial hit on the wide receiver number one, Keith Gidry, who plays both ways on this team. Gets the penalty yardage back, but not much more as it was only a six-yard gain. Our grapevine is so quick to the ball, aren't they? They recognize They rally slow, so well. And they, and they rally so quickly. They gang tackle well. So third and nine now for the Yellow Jackets. He was knocked out of bounds. And now we have the whistle blown, and we're going to have a timeout by Grapevine as they had something not set up right defensively, and the Mustangs used their second timeout of the half. We'll take this timeout with them. 21-7 Grapevine. Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio, and this is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. Do you feel your home is too humid and slightly musty? Do you have that room or side of the house you don't use because it's too hot or too cold? Do you have family members struggling with health issues or allergies? Then contact Energy Attic and transform your living spaces by transforming your attic. Energy Attic uses a three-part energy reduction system to make your home or office as comfortable and energy efficient as possible, saving you money, reducing your carbon footprint, and improving indoor air quality. Who doesn't want to save money, breathe cleaner air, and sleep better? Energy Attic helps improve your home climate control, reduce those cold and hot pockets. Church is for you. Join us each week to experience great music, a message that applies to your everyday life, as well as programming for your kids and students to engage on their level. Learn more at compass.church. Yeah, uh huh. Everybody. Out of the timeout, third and nine for the Yellow Jackets at their own 36-yard line. 32 seconds left to go here in the first half. They go spread formation, four wide. Snap is back, 
They hand off to the freshman up the middle, breaks a tackle, gets across midfield, still pushing the pile, and finally gets brought down at the Grapevine 48-yard line, but not before he gets a gain of six to set up a fourth and three, and no reason not to go for it if you're Arlington Heights here. Can you imagine what he looked like in eighth grade like in the PB he is, system? He is a big I mean, kid for a freshman. That is a lot of hard running for a freshman. He's a big, strong kid. Fourth and three. This will probably be the last play of the half as Heights has let the clock run down. They get it off. Allen drops back. He's going to fire it deep up the sideline, and he has a man, but it's the throw is too far with that wind at his back. That throw carried over the head of Deshaun Long up the near sideline, and that will do it for the first half. The Mustangs score touchdowns on three of their four possessions in the first half, and they go to the locker room leading the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21-7. to When we come back, we will have the halftime show for you, including the Mustang Phillies and the Great Mind Mustang Marching Band. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith here with you from Champion Sports Radio, and this is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. We're back here at Farrington Field as the halftime show is just about ready to begin. The Grapevine Mustangs lead the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21 to seven. And right now we're gonna take you down to the field for the halftime show as the Grapevine Phillies are coming onto the field. They'll be followed by the Mustang Marching Band. This halftime brought to you by our friends at Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference. This halftime actually brought to you by our friends at Chill in Grapevine. Eat, drink, and dance at Chill. Philly social officers are President Sarah Randolph, Vice President Emily Daniel, Secretary Emily Franz, Historian Annalie Litton, Chancellor Emily Jones, Social Media Administrator Jackson Bill, Philanthropy Chair Amy Alexander, and Student Advocate Abby Ryan. Welcome to Bill, the great five fabulous Phillies dance team. This week's spirit girl is Reese Ramsey. Rookie of the week is Lucia Orozco. And our Philly honor girl is Emily Jones. The Phillies will be performing a field string or two. Don't stop the music.
inside. Feel the difference. Feel the difference. 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 You can see the feel the difference. years, the Stacy family has been proud to serve North Texas with exceptional furniture that combines comfort and style. So thank you for shopping with our family. We're celebrating with huge savings during Stacy's anniversary sale. Right now, save 50% or more on quality furniture for every room in your home. Shop Stacy's Sleep Solutions and receive the royal treatment. Buy today and get a king mattress for the price of a queen. It's all on sale during Stacy's anniversary celebration. Remember, when you're shopping at Stacy's, you're shopping, shopping with, with family, family and you're not burning money. Compass Church is for you. Join us each week to experience great music, a message that applies to your everyday life, as well as programming for your kids and students to engage on their level. Learn more at compass.church. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But whirly ball is... A corp... Living in North Texas provides all of us with an amazing quality of life, including an affordable cost of living, outstanding schools, unbelievable cultural opportunities, and the best sports around. But we also have to put up with severe storms. Hi folks, Champion Sports Radio president and founder Thomas Lee here to tell you when a hail or windstorm comes through your neighborhood, do what we did and call Greenleaf Roofing. Greenleaf Roofing is a fully insured, locally owned and operated company built on the values of amazing craftsmanship, affordable options and innovative solutions. And they are proud that those values still stand as a foundation for their business today. And did I mention Greenleaf Roofing has 24 hour emergency service available? It's nice to know Greenleaf Roofing will be there in a hurry if you need them. After the first experience, I became a customer for life and have used them on three different homes. But don't just take my word for it. Learn about the Greenleaf Roofing difference yourself by calling them at 972-379-9109 or go online to greenleaf-roofing.com to find out how you can get your free quote. Greenleaf Roofing, the number one choice for all your roofing needs. Back here at Farrington Field, your halftime score, the Grapevine Mustangs lead the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21 to seven. We are still in halftime. That halftime brought to you by our friends at Chill in Grapevine. And right now we're gonna take you back down to the field for the Arlington Heights drill team and marching band.
one of our directors, Michael Beaver, main captains are Aiden Hockey and Hudson Harris. Color guard captains are Marilyn Green, Lily Harbour, and Amanda Nino. The Heights band would like to recognize and congratulate the following band members. Section of the week is the Woodwinds. Band member of the week, Elena Ozuna. Freshman of the week, Carson Yarbrough. The Hill would also like to thank all of our amazing band parent volunteers organized by the Arlington Heights Band Boosters. Best of luck to the Great Line High School Marching Band tonight and their performance tomorrow at Area Marching Contest. Heights Band recently received straight from the first edition of the UIO Royal High Marching Contest and will compete at the Area Net Marching Contest tomorrow. Tonight they will be in their 2023 program entitled Song of Sirens.
Excellent job by both bands here at halftime. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith here with you from historic Farrington Field in downtown Fort Worth. The Mustangs leading the Arlington Heights Yellow Jackets by a score of 21 to seven. Both the Heights and Grapevine marching bands and drill teams did a fantastic job and both teams are have already gotten warmed up on the sideline. The Heights Yellow Jackets have already come on the field. The Mustangs about to run out of BAM, as you can see on our monitor. And Tim, the story of the first half is kind of what we talked about in the pregame. The Mustangs' defense has really stepped up in this game. They've slowed down this Arlington Heights offensive attack, which has been varied. They've run tempo, trying to hit some quick hits in the passing game and the run game, but they've stepped up and done the job. And the Mustang offense has been very efficient tonight. Well, I think the picture we saw a second ago with that smoke coming out of the, the horse's mouth there, of the, uh, the Mustang's mouth, it tells us everything. They've been simply on fire on both sides of the football. Harrison Hackbarth has been amazing. We don't. We were talking about it during the break. We don't think he's missed a pass yet. Yeah, we the don't. one incompletion, there was a penalty. So he's used his legs a few times for some big runs. All the receivers are getting involved in the game. Both running backs, Dunn and Connor Bell, have gotten involved. It's been an all-star affair for everybody here tonight on Great Barn. Yeah, and it is going to be the Mustang defense. It's going to be back out on the field as the Yellow Jackets will take the ball to start half number two down 21-7. to As we talked about, uh, all the touchdowns tonight have been on the ground. Demontre has done with one score, Connor Bell with two. But the interesting thing about this offense has been the fact that the Mustangs really, for the first time this season, have been a more balanced offense and have really unleashed the passing attack, both with just straight dropbacks and play action. Yeah, I don't think that we have seen this grapevine offense on the first series of the game go downfield like we saw here tonight. Harrison Hackmarth letting it loose early in this game, throwing it down the field. Love to see that. I don't think the Yellow Jackets, Yellow Jackets were prepared for that either. They probably weren't, and the Mustangs were able to move the ball mostly on the ground, but with some balance, moving it through the air. Uh, as Tim just mentioned, we don't believe uh, Harrison Hackbarth has an official incompletion in that first half. And yes, ha uh, Harrison also did a really good job with his legs, both escaping pressure and a couple of times keeping it uh, on the speed option and uh, really was able to add an extra dimension to this offense. And so, so far the rain, it looks like it's starting to hit us, Jacob. We've got some sprinkles on the window. Little we, bit. Know it, we know it's raining on the other side of town. The big Duncanville game has been postponed momentarily so yep. we've been pretty lucky so far yep. see if we can get through this second half a little dry and the mustangs will kick off as hayden rhodes he is about to kick it deep with the wind at his back and that wind pushes this ball a good eight yards deep and out of the end zone and so the yellow jackets will start at their own 25 yard line the yellow jackets did have some success moving the ball at times in the first half both on the ground and through the air of course quarterback alan banks uh, doing some good good stuff with quick throws. What we have noticed with the passing attack tonight is everything so far for Arlington Heights in the passing game has been outside the hashes. Outside the hashes. Now, we know the quarterback's not the tallest. That could just be their scheme. Maybe he's not the best at throwing it down the middle of the field. We didn't see any games of theirs previous to this. But we did expect more running than what we've seen. Maybe that's going to be something that they'll concentrate more in the second half, particularly in this third quarter going against the win. They did have some success with both the with both uh, Carson James and Latrell Brooks in the running attack and on first down up the middle and nowhere to go it's going to be a gain of officially a yard that time for I believe that was number 23 Deshaun Long who came in to take a handoff you know we talked about the primary running backs but they do use other guys in this running attack at different times and that time Long only got a yard as it's now split back on second down, and it's Brooks and James in the back. Brooks and James in the backfield with Banks. Yeah, well, a little wildcat to start off the third quarter. Doesn't get him much. Low snap picked up by Allen. He gets away from pressure. Now he throws over the middle from where he was. A pass is caught, threw it into traffic, but the grab was made that time. A nice catch by number 23, Deshaun Long. is That was a dangerous throw, but it was a great job by Allen of corralling that bad snap and getting away from pressure. Well, to have the presence of mind to get the snap, he's able to jump out of a tackle and then get those hips flipped around and make a very dangerous but accurate throw down the field. 
Up to the 29, third and six now after the three yard catch and run. Again, split backs with Brooks and James in the backfield. Now James moves up as an H back. Rolling to his right is Allen. He'll get the ball away. He's got a man open down the field and that pass is caught. Inside the grapevine 30, inside the 20 and finally knocked out of bounds is Deshaun Long as that time he was able to split the safeties and get behind the grapevine defense. Yeah, and throwing into the teeth of this wind, you move the freshman running back up to the H spot because why? Because there's a blitzer coming off the edge. He's able to pick that up, give your quarterback a little bit of extra time, hits a wide open man behind the entire defense. A huge gain, biggest gain of the night for Arlington Heights. 57 yards on the catch and run by Deshaun Long. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets at the Grapevine, 14. And another low throw, and this time James just has to fall on it as he tried to pick it up and couldn't. And it's a four-yard loss back to the 22nd rolling snap of this possession. Second bad nap, uh, bad snap rather that we've seen on this drive so far. And Helps can, the Grapevine defense to put them in second and long. You can see how they're they're moving their protection to the side. He's rolling on these last yeah. couple of plays as the running back moves up as an H back. That's a bit of a tell. We'll see if Grapevine keys on it. Second and 14, snap back. Allen with the throw. Pass is caught on the near side. Tackle is missed inside the five. It's going to be short of the end zone, but Ryan Hamilton that time got juked by the leading wide receiver, Enrique Manzano. He was playing really soft coverage and had to come up hard and fast. And Manzano did a great job of sidestepping and gets knocked out at the one first and goal. And that can be the, de the deterrent to that weak coverage is you, you have to come up and make those tackles. Handoff on first and goal at the one and walking it into the end zone untouched is Carson James, the freshman. And the Yellow Jackets come out and score quickly to pull back within one score. They went right down the field, and the big play, of course, hitting the wide open corner going down. To, I mean, that was 40 yards on that play. Uh, so 57, 57, actually, yeah. So a 57 yard play is a shot in the arm, and it's always good offensively to get those big chunk plays. Grapevine doesn't give those up very often. Extra point is up. And it is good. 9.22 to go in the third quarter. It's back to a one-score game. Grapevine leading 21-14. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith with Champion Sports Radio. This is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. Hi, I'm Russ Teeger. And I'm Laura Teeger. We're the proud owners of AC Pros. Family-owned and operated business going on 26 years. And here's a little bit of what we do. Hi, I'm Jim Bradley. I'm a comfort specialist here at AC Pros. We are a full service residential and light commercial HVAC company. We do sales and service for residential HVAC. We also do windows, uh, attic efficiencies, radiant barrier insulation, solar fans to make your system last longer. Today we're out here in Keller servicing one of our customers' outside units. This is Joel, our lead tech, taking care of the maintenance today. At AC Pros, we're small enough to care, but big enough to take care of business. Go Mustangs! The kickoff is a short pooch. It's picked up at the 19. Coming around to the near side is Carradine. He's got room up the sideline and finally steps out, gets knocked out of bounds, but no flag. That looked like a late hit I to mean, both was, of us. He was tackled six yards out of bounds. I don't understand how there's not a flag on that. He was clearly stepped out of bounds and then takes the big shot past the white. That's yeah, a penalty. That sure looked like he was out of bounds when that hit came, but no flag came out. But it was about a 19, 20-yard return on the short kick from Carradine, and the Mustangs take over at their own 38-yard line. Great field position for them to start off their third quarter drive. They've got the wind at their back, which has slowed down a little bit, by the way. The wind is starting to slow down just a tad. First and 10 for the Mustangs as they go offset out of the pistol here. Snap back, hand off to Dunn, up the middle, breaks a tackle, now he's into the open field. He's inside the territory, up the near sideline, inside the 25, makes a move, still on his feet, and finally knocked down inside the 20. A huge run from Demontres Dunn on the first play of the possession, gets down to the Arlington Heights. Where are they gonna mark him? They're gonna mark him at the 19-yard line. 
That is a massive run of 43 yards for Demontrez Dunn. And that time we have a newcomer in the game, number 82. It's going to be Nathaniel Davis, the 5'11", 180-pound junior wide receiver who makes a big block downfield to spring that for Dunn. First and 10 for the Mustangs in the red zone now. Hand off to Connor Bell going over the left side. Still on his feet. He's inside the 10, breaking tackles, and he's going to have another first down as he gets an 11-yard gain down to the 8. Leaving cleat marks on opponents' chests. I mean, just running people over. You got to love the strength that Connor Bell runs the ball with. After the quick touchdown to start this third quarter, the Mustangs are trying to answer back in just as quick a fashion as they now have first and goal at the Yellow Jackets' 8-yard line. Oh, here's a little replay we can see. Look at the blocking. Look at number 72 come around. He misses the first guy but gets a hand on the safety and allows Connor to continue to get upfield. Another handoff to Connor Bell. This time they attack it well. They crash from the outside. Bell cut down after a gain of only about two yards as coming in from the outside to make that tackle was the defensive back, number 21, Lamont Montilla. Well, Grapevine has ran the ball well all season. Great to see Ben Williams, though, back in the lineup, and you can see he's made a big difference here tonight. And a timeout has been called. I believe, yes, it was the Yellow Jackets who trying to get their defense off their heels. They were they, they limited uh, Bell to only a one-yard gain there on that first down, but we'll go ahead and take that timeout. We'll take that time out with them. 7.52 to go here in the third quarter. It is 21-14 Grapevine. This is Mustang Friday night on Tradio. Each year across the United States, young lives are lost to sudden cardiac arrest and our communities are left to pick up the pieces. That's what happened in April of 2009 when Zachary Shaw lost his life to an undiagnosed heart condition after collapsing suddenly during a Plano East Senior High School football practice. After his death, Zach's loved ones knew it was time to take action to protect young hearts across North Texas from this silent killer. Since its establishment in 2009, Living for Zachary has impacted thousands of families by providing heart screenings for ages 12 to 22, donating AEDs to youth-based organizations. Second and goal for the Mustangs at the seven yard line after the timeout. Snap back, it's a handoff inside the five and walking it into the corral for the touchdown is Demontrez Dunn, a nice little Little zone read action, a handoff on the draw. Dunn punches it in, his second torrent score of the night, and the Mustangs answer. Dunn, 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 Dunn. He gets, finally gets his shot to run it into the end zone or bring it into the corral, as you so affectionately say each and every time. This offensive line has just been opening up holes all night for these, for these running backs, Dunn and Bell. Our replays tonight brought to you by our friends at Black Walnut Cafe. Hayden Rhodes on for the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.46 to go here in the third quarter. This third quarter brought to you by our friends at Classic Chevrolet. 28-14, Grapevine. This is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. Oh, we're going to stick with this replay on Mustang Friday Night. So let's, the... let's watch it here. You have Brady Wagner in at the H-back, and he always is going to make a contribution on each and every run. And as they lined it up, you see the little zone read action. And sure enough, look at Brady get out on the linebacker. And who was that? Was that Ben Williams that again? That was Ben Williams again. It was. Again, Ben Williams. Boy, welcome back to the lineup. And a great job that time by Hackbarth of holding that ball in the gut of Dunn and letting it go at the last second because that made the linebacker, junior linebacker, uh, Gang Lamb, number 33, commit to the quarterback. He decided to attack the quarterback instead of the running back, and that just had a wide left a wide open lane for Dunn to walk through from seven yards out. You gotta love the, the ball handling from Harrison Ackbarth this season. The kickoff is away from Hayden Rhodes. It is going to be about seven yards deep in the end zone again, and the Yellow Jackets take over at their own 25. Last time the Yellow Jackets went 75 yards as the passing attack opened up a big play, a 57-yard catch to uh, catch and run to Deshaun Long, then a really good job by Enrique Manzano, the leading wide receiver, to slip a tackle attempt on second and 14 and get it down to the one to set up a one-yard touchdown from Carson James, the freshman. It's certainly a great drive for them coming out of the half, exactly what they drew up when they were in there talking about it on the whiteboard, I'm sure. But the Mustangs answer back with a 62-yard drive of their own, finished off from seven yards out 
by Demontra's Dunn on his second touchdown of the night. First and 10, snap back to Allen, fires one out here near side, pass is caught, but Manzano had to dive to make that grab and ends up only getting a four yard gain. You know, it's hard, Allen is all the way on the other hash mark yeah. and threw that ball all the way across almost to the numbers. That's a long throw for a five yard hitch. Especially in this wind, which is in his face. In his face. Second and six now at the 29. Snap back, it's gonna be a handoff coming to the near side. It's a nice little power run by Latrell Brooks as he just carried a couple of grapevine defenders, including Bradley Stanier. Strong run by the senior Latrell Brooks and he gets it about a yard short of a first down. Anytime you can run down and you've got Stanier and you've got Devin Thomas on your back, that's a pretty good job and Burns was in there too and he just continued to motor on through. Third and a yard, Brooks with the handoff again. He's trying to get the corner and he is gonna get it. Nice tackle by, I believe that was Bryson Davis, but he wasn't able to stop him short of the first down. Only a two yard gain for Brooks, but he only needed one to move the chains. Bryson Davis, Brady Boozer. Brady Boozer is all over the field, isn't he? Each and every week, he's just all over the field. Only a junior. First and 10 now at the 36. Allen looking to throw, pump fake, gonna go deep again, has a man, and it's just out of the reach of Monzano, the leading receiver, a little hitch and go that time on the pump fake, and Monzano had a, uh, Monzano had a couple of steps, but the pass was just a hair too long. Well, they may have had a touchdown there, but the, like you say, the pass just a hair long, surprising that he's thrown into the wind, although like I said a little bit while ago, the wind seems to be dying down just a little bit, and he's thrown already some good passes, going this direction already. Again, Manzano came into this game as the leading wide receiver, the senior. 33 catches, 347 yards. Hand up on second down to the freshman, James. Coming around the near side, check that. That was Latrell Brooks, number 34. He had James lead blocking for him out of that split back shotgun set. Got about three yards out to the, or two yards out to the 38. That sets up a third and eight now. Bradley Stanier on the stop and why not? He's been everywhere too and he told me this this past uh, Tuesday when I saw him at practice, that, that was the plan, to be everywhere, and he sure has. Four wide set on third and long for the Yellow Jackets. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Allen drops back, fires a pass, caught on the near side. It's going to be sh short of a first down as a great tackle that time. As soon as the ball was caught, Darion Burns wrapped up the receiver right where he caught it, and it was about two yards short of the first down. Darion Burns, obviously, he is usually a sure tackler. And he's not the one that missed the tackle earlier either. I mean, Daria, he's gonna, he gets his hands on you. You're not going very far. And now it's, as the Yellow Jackets line up to go for it on fourth and two at their own 44, the coaching staff, head coach Curtis James, decides to call a timeout. So 5.29 to go in the third quarter, fourth and two for Arlington Heights. Mustangs lead by 14. This is Mustang Friday night on Tradio. Texas, the time to step up is now during Classic Truck Month. To remain number one in America, we're racing with grit to offer you more than anyone. New Silverados, an unprecedented 10 grand off MSRP. That's $37,000 for a new Silverado. Don't settle. Only Classic Chevrolet offers 10 grand off on the largest selection of Silverados in America. Over 300 on the ground. This is Texas. This is Classic. Claim 10 grand off before this one-time opportunity is gone. Compass Church is for you. Join us each week to experience great music, a message that applies to your everyday life, as well as programming for your kids and students to engage on their level. Learn more at compass.church. Jacob Dedimore and Tim Smith with Champion Sports Radio back here with you at Farrington Field here in downtown Fort Worth. 5.29 to go in the third quarter. The Mustangs leading the Yellow Jackets by a score 28 to 14. And it's fourth and two for Arlington Heights at their own 44. And they are gonna bring the offense back out onto the field and go for this at their own 42 facing a fourth and two. Why not? A little sense of urgency here. 5.29 left to go in the third quarter down two and you're not really having a lot of success stopping grapevines. Snap back handoff to the freshman. He's got a big easy first down as that was a huge hole opened up by that Heights offensive line. No problem at all converting that. He gets a 10 yard gain into grapevine territory. Well, Arlington Heights has proven that they can run the football for the most part here tonight. So again, a fourth and two by midfield. Pretty easy decision, I think. And now, little tempo getting up to the line quickly is Heights. 
First and 10 at the grapevine, 46 after the 10-yard gain from the freshman Carson James. Hand off again to Latrell Brooks this time as he tries to pick his way through the line, gets a little bit of yardage. They're going to mark him down at the 42 for a gain of four. Devin Thomas in on the play. Bradley Stanier in on the play. Major Heck in on the play. The normal suspects. I love out of this split back set how both running backs will block for the other one a lot of times. It reminds me a lot of the John Makovic offense from back in the days at the University of Texas. Second and six now at the 42 of Grapevine. Just over four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. As the Mustangs lead by 14. Snap back. Hand off to Brooks. Right over left guard. Little bit of room this time. Forward progress gets stopped after about a three-yard gain to the 39, where it'll be third down. And, you know, I, going back to that fourth down attempt, the other reason I understand it from the Arlington Heights perspective, you talked about the fact that they haven't had much success stopping the grapevine offense. And, the, you know, they did have the possession before this, some good momentum going on offense, so they want to try and keep it going, I think. Uh, absolutely you want to keep it going, and you, you're playing the catch-up game right now, so you can't afford any drives where you don't score points until you get that defensive stop. Third and three at the Grapevine 39. Allen looking to throw, near side pass, and it is caught a great diving grab by Manzano as it was just a little hitch route, and that was a beautiful catch as he's diving towards the near sideline to get the first down. Heck of an effort. I mean, again, kind of a tough throw against this wind onto the, onto the sideline, out, to, out at the numbers. Heck of a catch, all hands that time. Six-yard catch to move the chains. First and 10 at the 33. As the Yellow Jackets are driving again. Staying in this split back set, which they have been in the whole possession. Snap back to Allen. Fires one far side, and it's caught out there by Manzano once again. Hamilton making the tackle, but not before he gets 10 yards to move the chains. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Pretty much outside of one, outside of a couple of throws, everything has been short and, two and outside the hashes. I'm not quite sure why Ryan Hamilton and the, the secondary is laying so far off of these wide receivers for Arlington Heights. Well, and they are really far back. Arlington Heights just taking advantage, hitting those quick little hitch routes. And you have to wonder, you see Major Heck is kind of widened out now towards the end of the numbers you wonder if he's not going to try to undercut one of these throws yeah that's actually boozer i think on or the slot boozer, guy rather. snap back handoff on first down and a nice job by the grapevine defensive front you're right as it is boozer. tatum as uh, tatum evans and maddox stanley stop latrell brooks right at the line of scrimmage for no game that's going to be the key is to try to get one of your defenders underneath to try to undercut one of these throws maybe second and ten now for the Yellow Jackets. Really giving a lot of cushion to these wide receivers for heights. Now showing blitz, and here it comes. Little wide receiver screen and a great job that time on the tackle. What a fantastic job attacking that play by Bryson Davis. He beat the block on the inside and decked the wide receiver, number 23, Deshaun Long, right as he caught the ball for a huge loss back to the 29-yard line. Marcus Davis simply seen enough, and he took matters into his own hands with a great read recognition there and a very sure open field tackle. Loss of six on the play, third and 16 back at the 29. Four wide set now on third down. Three-man rush. Allen fires one deep down the middle of the field, and that pass is going to be intercept. No, incomplete. Bryson Davis almost had an interception, but it went through his hands as he was going to the ground. And it would have been interesting to see if he had caught that, where they would have marked it, because that was right near the goal line. I think Burns thought that he was going to catch it, thinks that <laughs> Davis played some defense on him, because you could see he was visually upset, saying, hey, I had that ball. Yeah, and that was just oh, a, that was, a well-thrown pass. That, there, no, that was just grabs. a Hail Mary into coverage yeah. by Allen on third and 16. And with the wind in their face, they're going to leave the offense on the field, might as well, on fourth and 16 at the 29. That reminded me of a Jalen Hurts pass. Snap back, Allen. They're going to throw a screen pass. And over the middle, and a great open field tackle. Where are they going to spot the ball, Jacob? It doesn't matter. Cooper Towery stops him you well short of the first down. They threw well a backside screen with the majority of the formation on the far side came to the back, came to the backside formation on a screen and Cooper Towery makes a huge tackle on fourth down. Well, Leighton Towery's always going to be able to make the tackle in open field. We've seen him do it a hundred times. 
He's definitely college bound. He's a big, strong kid. Rig recognition is off the charts. Oh, you said it was Cooper. It was Tower. Cooper. Well, yeah, hey, was the- Cooper's only a sophomore, but Cooper has that lineage in him. Cooper with the stop. My mistake. Only a six-yard gain on fourth and 16. Mustangs take over at their 23. Hand off on first down and nowhere to go as there was a lot of penetration that time in the backfield. And it started up with number 14, Max Milton, the junior linebacker, as he got in there immediately and stopped Demontrez Dunn for a three-yard loss. Yeah, absolutely nowhere. We've seen that a couple of times tonight where they just bring everybody, and they certainly got away with it that time as they brought everyone up the middle. Stopping Dunn for no yards, and now second and long. Second and 13 back at the 20. Just over 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Hackbarth looking to throw, completes the pass on the screen and another great open field tackle. That was excellent recognition and pursuit. That was the senior linebacker, James Akbar, number 52, who chased that play from the middle and wrapped up Burns right after he caught the pass. And there was some blocking downfield as well. That was set up well, but great individual effort there defensively. Again, they've seen that play a few times, Arlington Heights has, and maybe they've seen enough of it themselves. Yeah, only a two yard gain for Burns, sets up third and 11, and it looks like the Mustangs are gonna let this quarter looks run way. out, and they're gonna switch ends and take this to the fourth quarter. So the Mustangs answer the Heights touchdown that started the third quarter. Each team puts one in the end zone, and we go to the fourth with the same difference in score that we had starting the third quarter. Mustangs leading Arlington Heights by a score of 28 to 14. We'll be back with quarter number four. Jacob Dedamore and Tim Smith from Champion Sports Radio. And this is Mustang Friday Night on Tradio. Do you feel your home is too humid and slightly musty? Do you have that room or side of the house you don't use because it's too hot or too cold? Do you have family members struggling with health issues or allergies? Then contact Energy Attic and transform your living spaces by transforming your attic. Energy Attic uses a three-part energy reduction system to make your home or office as comfortable and energy efficient as possible, saving you money, reducing your carbon footprint, and improving indoor air quality. Who doesn't want to save money, breathe cleaner air, and sleep better? Energy Attic helps improve your home climate control, reduce Reduces those cold and hot pockets, makes it more comfortable throughout, and saves you up to 40% on your energy bill. It's fast and easy to schedule your free Energy Attic audit. Simply visit energyattic.com and fill out the form. Virtual. Ready to start the fourth quarter, third and 11. Hackbarth drops back to throw, fires one deep. It's caught at the 35, and it's going to be a first down for Darion for Darius Burns. Out past the 35-yard line as the Mustangs spread it out and let Hackbarth uncork the arm, and he fired a strike over the middle to move the chains. Coaching staff showing a lot, a lot of confidence in Harrison going into the win, and he just lets a rocket go down the field right to the middle of the defense. Great throw. Replay brought to you by our friends at Black Walnut Cafe, first and 10. On first down, handoff, nice move across the line. And up the middle goes Dunn. He's across midfield, and he's going to be into Arlington Heights territory after a big run of 16 yards. But there is, I believe, a flag on the play. Really hard to see. Ah, there it is. Really hard to see flags from these tinted windows. They're going to call holding. And they're going to call a hold right in the middle of the formation. So wipe out a 16-yard run for Dunn. Wow. I mean, nice run, too. Ian yeah. Hatton. Really all the way down the field, paving that way for him. And now you're going to have to, Harrison, you're going to have to use your arm again in all likelihood and get him back into positive field position. One key note about that last possession, the timeout that Arlington Heights used on the first fourth down attempt that they converted, that was their second of the half. They only have one timeout to work with here in the fourth quarter. That could prove to go against them. First and 20 now. First and 20, handoff up the middle. Actually, that was Hackmar keeping the ball up the middle that time. Solid gain to the 28, gain of about five, four or five. So now we've got second and about 16. Uh, 16, yeah, not, not really where Grapevine likes to be behind the chains like this, but see what they're gonna drum up here to get them in the third and short third and medium. Well, and Grapevine at this point up 14. Every every snap, you need to be using a good 35 seconds of play clock. Second and 14, 16 now at the 28. 
Two backs in the backfield, Bell and Dunn. Snap back, it's going to be a handoff to Connor Bell. He's got some room up the middle, out past the 30, out to the 35. Nice run that time by Connor Bell. Gain of seven, setting up a third and nine. Not bad, now you've got third and manageable, right? Obviously a little bit longer than what you like on most cases, but you are taking the clock. They snap that with about three to four seconds left on the play clock, so very deliberate in how they're using the time up two possessions. And the key here for Harrison Hackbarth, you've got to assume they're going to pass the ball here on third and nine. But the key here is make sure that make sure you're not turning the ball over. You don't want to throw it into traffic. There's a nice little replay of the next play, but oh, we're going to have to go back live. Third and nine. Snap back to Hackbarth. He fires one over the middle, and that pass is caught once again. A beautiful throw, another catch. Good catch by Darius Burns, blocking off the wide receiver. Boxing him out on that slant, and they move the chains. I think that he now has the most catches in a game that he's had this I year. I believe you're right. And Burns, and what a great job adjustment that he made. That ball was thrown a little bit more inside than where he had settled in, and he was able to scoot over and make the catch. As we watch it here, you have a nice little combination route, a little in route with a with with a flat. He gets him there. He makes a nice. Move extension into the teeth of the defense. What a catch, all hands. Gain of 13 yards on the catch for Darius Burns. First and 10 at the 47. Snap back. Hand off to Dunn, picking his way through. Gets across midfield. Gain of about four yards to the 49 of the Yellow Jackets. This is what Grapevine wants to do. They want to get back into the flow of their offense. They never really lost it even from the penalty throwing of course on that third down but they are ahead of the chains now second and medium and look at that that clock tick 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 counting down to just over eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game second and six snap back Hand off to Dunn, got room up the middle inside the 45. He's going to be really close to the first down, maybe just short. Looks like they're going to mark him about a yard short. Five-yard gain for Dunn to set up a very makeable third down here at the 44 of Heights. Once again, Ben Williams and Ian Hatton. They have been the story in the run game tonight, or at least two of the big stories in the run game tonight. Ian Hatton has been everywhere. He blocked two guys on that particular play. As we watch the replay here, hopefully, oh, thought we were about to have it. <laughs> Third and a yard now for the Mustangs. Our producer the keeps playing tricks on me. Third and a yard at the, must at the Yellow Jacket 44. Handoff up the middle. And a great job done to get the first down right there as he had a guy get penetration into the backfield and dodged that tackle attempt and was able to get just enough to move the chains and keep this drive going. This fourth quarter brought to you by our friends at GM Civil Engineering. Grapevine bringing in a few new receivers now. Using some rotations tonight to keep guys fresh. This is the kind of drive Grapevine needed here to start this fourth quarter. Time consuming. Already almost five minutes gone here in this fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 43. Another handoff to Dunn going over the right side. Inside the 40, moving the pile right behind Ben Williams. And they get a huge chunk down wow. to the 40, 35 yard line. Gonna be a gain of seven. And that time it was Brady Wagner on the outside that got the seal for the initial hole. And then Ben Williams down the field just dragging defenders along, creating that path like a bulldozer. It's great. Look at him. There's, he oh, takes yeah. on number 10 and he drives him and continue. I mean, that's seven yard drive block right there. That's got to get him some effort points come film time. Yeah, on Kellen Petrie, a guy who's made a number of plays tonight yeah. for the Yellow Jackets. Second and three now. Snap back, hand off to Bell up the middle, driving the pile Ooh. forward. He's going to get the first down. Four yards on the run from Connor Bell. That will move the sticks. And once again, the Mustangs, the ground attack. A couple of key throws here on third downs on this drive, but the ground attack just keeping that clock churning. Yeah, four yards here, three yards here, six yards there. I don't know if uh, Arlington Heights is going to get the ball back, Jacob. The Mustangs at this point, even if you know they're driving into the wind as well. Well, this is how you put a team away, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. They are putting this game away. Hand off to Connor Bell on second down, and this time not much room. He's going to get wrapped up after only about a yard down to the 29-yard line that time. Making the tackle was the sophomore defensive lineman, Kanan James, as he got to the legs of Bell and 
stopped him right in the hole. Not bad, though. You still got three yards. That's, I mean, anytime you can get three yards, three times three is nine. You'll go for it on fourth down. That's a first down every drive. Second down at the 29-yard line now for the Mustangs as they are definitely trying to put together a put-away drive here in this ballgame. This time Bell and Dunn both in the backfield. And it's going to be a handoff to Bell, and he's into the open field, inside the 10, the 5, and walks it into the corral for a touchdown. Connor Bell goes untouched from 29 yards out, and that might be the final nail in the coffin for Arlington Heights. It doesn't get much easier if you're Connor Bell on that one to get in and ring that bell. Great job. That's his one of his longest touchdown runs of the season, I would think. It has Definitely to be because might be. he's the guy they asked to do the dirty work inside the five-yard line, and that time he just bust right through that left side Right down the hash, easy touchdown for Connor Bell. That ties, according to the stats from Grapevine, the extra point is up and it is good. That ties his longest run of the season. That was pretty close. 29 okay. yards out. Real On that play, I love the play design from Coach DeBest as they had DeMontres done cross in front of Hackbarth and uh, Bell came the other way behind him and it made the defense go as we're seeing the Black Walnut Cafe replay here. You'll see Dunn cross in front first. That drew the eyes of the defense. Then they handed it to Bell on the backside, and nobody was there. Great job by number 71, Daniel Campos, who really, truly opens up that hole, turns his lineman all the way to the left, right down the seam. Great cut, great vision by Bell to see where the hole was. Once he put his foot in the ground, he was off to the races. He saw nothing but that red end zone in front of him. All five touchdowns tonight for the Mustangs have been on the ground. That's the third of the night for Connor Bell. DeMontre has done, has the other two. And the ground attack does what the Mustangs want it to do, a time-consuming drive that started at the end of the third quarter and took almost seven minutes of the fourth quarter as they take it into the end zone and now have their biggest lead of the night. With a big penalty in the middle of that, it took a big third down and nine throw from Harrison Hackbarth to keep that drive alive, so good team offense all the way around. The kick from Hayden Rhodes into this wind is going to go about four yards deep as the wind is still blowing. Maybe a little bit is not quite as strong as earlier, but still blowing out of the north. That drive, by the way, went 77 yards after the turnover on downs when the Mustangs got the stop on fourth down and they're able to drive it down the field and punch it into the end zone. Uh, just not much now that you're going to be able to do if you're the Yellow Jackets. They'll take, and we'll go ahead and take a break here. This is Friday Night Lights. The time to step up is now during Classic Truck Month. To remain number one in America, we're racing with grit to offer you more than anyone. New Silverados, an unprecedented 10 grand off MSRP. That's $37,000 for a new Silverado. Don't settle. Only Classic Chevrolet offers 10 grand off on the largest selection of Silverados in America. Over 300 on the ground. This is Texas. This is Classic. Claim 10 grand off before this one-time opportunity is gone. They went quick after that timeout, after the kickoff, and uh, tried a deep shot up the near side, trying to hit number four, Ryan White. Pass went just off his fingertips, incomplete. And it's now second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Well, they're gonna try to move fast. I just don't know, this grapevine defense is pretty good when you're trying to get deep on them. Jacob Dedeborn and Tim Smith here with Champion Sports Radio. Snap back to Allen on second down, and that's a quick throw and great coverage and an even better catch. As <laughs> Major Heck was all over that route and catch by number four, Ryan White, and somehow he was able to hang on. It was only a, a three-yard gain, but, man, that was a great job by both players, honestly. Love Major Heck, how fast he can get to the ball carrier, how fast he diagnoses where the play is meant to go and is able to break down and make tackles in the open field. Third and seven now, snap back to Allen, play action, dropping back. He's gonna fire one to the near side, pass is caught and tackle is made immediately as Ryan Hamilton undercuts the wide receiver who had to jump to catch that ball. That was Ryan White, the senior. He's up and is gonna come off the field under his own power, but he hit that ground hard, had to go up for that pass and 
Ryan Hamilton cut him down. Yeah, that was a great play by Ryan Hamilton. Had that ball been a little bit lower, we might have been looking at a pick six going the other way. That's how well Ryan Hamilton played the ball on that play. Interesting call here. It's fourth and three at the 32. And with four minutes to go, Arlington Heights brings the punt team on. I'm a little surprised by this move. I know they're down three scores, but you would think that on Watch fourth and fake. three, yeah. Fourth, the defense is staying on the field for Grapevine. They're not taking any chances. High snap, but the punt is away into this wind. And it gets a little bit of a heights roll inside down to the 35-yard line where it will be down. So a 33-yard punt that time from Rudy Riddigan. Are, are you surprised that Heights didn't take a shot there on fourth? I know they're deep. They're inside their own 35, but you're down three scores. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that. I mean, at least at least try to do a fake. I mean, not even fake. I would just straight go for it here. You're, you don't have a lot of time left. I, at this point, I feel like maybe they're just trying to get out of the game injury-free. Maybe. They, know, yeah, they're the they know they're in the playoffs. They know they're in the playoffs. Hey, let's just get out of here. Let's focus on what we have to do two weeks from now. Very well could be the case, but the Mustangs take over their own 35 after the punt. Just over three and a half minutes to go. Dunn in the backfield with Hackbarth, and he'll take the handoff on first down. Slips a tackle, and nice job by Dunn. And he's just now just pushing the pile I mean, all the way out past the 40 to the 42. Dunn moons, moonwalks through the hole initially, going backwards, gets himself <laughs> forward, then gets backwards again, and then is able to push the pile running backwards. So Dunn showing that he can do it all. He can run backwards, forwards, lateral. It doesn't matter. Well, that was a great job. We're seeing the replay here presented by, 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 by Black Walnut Cafe. Easy for you to say. And you watch him here. Right when he gets through the hole, he squirts through. He turns backwards because of the little spin. And then <laughs> there's a little moonwalk, little Michael Jackson action. Gets forward, and here he goes again. The fresh and he's driving the pile backwards. Hand off to Dunn again. He blakes through into the second level. He makes another spin move out past midfield. And brought down at the Yellow Jacket 47-yard line. It was he made that spin move on that previous play in the backfield on the freshman defensive lineman Carter James, who thought he was going to get a TFL. What what is going on with with this uh, done spin move? We saw it last week. I I feel like for the first time, and now almost on every play he is spinning out he's, of tackles. He's, he's using found it effectively. It. He yep. has found the I think it's the circle button. You I know. think that's what he's found. <laughs> The circle you know, button. You know, one guy I want to bring up that we talked about in the pregame but we haven't seen on the field tonight, so he might be injured, is their starting middle linebacker, senior number 16, Al Alberto Chavoya, who I have not seen on the field at all tonight. No. On first down, Dunn gets wrapped up, we think. He breaks tackles and may get back to the line of scrimmage. What an individual effort by Demontrez Dunn. Looked like he was going to get dropped for a loss and somehow was able to spin out of a tackle attempt and get back to the line of scrimmage. So back to what you were saying about number 16, yeah. uh, you know, Carly we Isabel, our very own Carly, Carly Isabel, Isabel, is Isabel. Uh, family friends with number 16. She was telling us earlier, he's got a lot of schools looking at him, yeah. and he's, he's a big stud here. We don't know why he's not on the yeah, field. Yeah, I mean, we haven't called his name once tonight. I don't think he's been on the field. Alberto Chavoya, again, was the one of the senior linebackers, and he led this team in tackles for loss and I believe was tied for the team lead in sacks. So if he hasn't been playing at all tonight, that's a huge loss uh, for this Heights defense and might explain why the Mustangs have had a little bit more success. Had a timeout called that time by the Mustangs as they weren't set up right. The play clock was about to run out. So 121 to go. Trey, do we want to go ahead and take a break here? We'll take it with them. This is Mustang Friday night on Tradio. For over 40 years, the Stacy family has been proud to serve North Texas with exceptional furniture that combines comfort and style. To thank you for shopping with our family, we're celebrating with huge savings during Stacy's anniversary sale. Right now, save 50% or more on quality furniture for every room in your home. Shop Stacy's Sleep Solutions and receive the royal treatment. Buy today and get a king mattress for the price of a queen. It's all on sale during Stacy's anniversary celebration. Remember, when you're shopping at Stacy's, you're, you're shopping, shopping with, with family, family and you're not burning money. After the timeout, second and 10, handoff to Connor Bell coming to the near side, and he gets around the corner, and as soon as the tacklers get to him, he does the smart thing right there and just went into a slide, 
instead of getting knocked out, potentially getting knocked out of bounds by this defense. I, I love that. I yep. love that IQ from the running back to know that, hey, if I can just slide down here, the clock's not going to stop. We're going to keep this thing rolling. No reason to get out of bounds. Going to carry it to a win, too, as we're under a minute to go in the ball game. Yeah, again, a smart play there by Connor Bell to keep the clock running. It's a gain of five. Third and five now. The Mustangs really can run this down and only have to snap it one more time. Bell in the backfield with Hackbarth on third down. And they'll give it to Bell. He's going to get the first down inside the 35, and that should do it for the ball game. So the Mustangs tonight come over to Fort Worth, out to Farrington Field, and get a big, hard-fought win tonight over a, you know, a pretty talented Arlington Heights club. But the Mustangs' offense was very efficient. The Grapevine defense came up with stops when they needed to. And the Mustangs tonight are going to get a 35-14 to win over Arlington Heights and clinch no worse than second place in the district. Exactly what they wanted. They were ready for this game. You could tell on Tuesday at practice they were ready for this game. And complete domination, really. I mean, the game was a little bit close early on. But once Grapevine got in their flow defensively, Offensively, what we're seeing and what I really like is that they are opening things up little by little. We've seen it week in and week out where this offense and Harrison Hackbarth gets a little bit more wings to him, gets to throw the ball just a little bit more. And I think they're really getting ready to really display a full offensive array come playoff time. Well, and what this game does, as we talked about, the winner of this game tonight was going to secure no worse than second place in District 4-5A in Division Two. And what that means is that the Mustangs in the by district round are more than likely guaranteed a home playoff game in the by district round, which starts in two weeks. The Mustangs do have one more regular season game to take care of. That will come next Thursday night as they will finish up the season on senior night at home against Trimble Tech out of Fort Worth ISD. So the Mustangs will need to take care of some business. Trimble Tech has struggled this year. So they will be playing them on senior night, hopefully end the season with a win and secure no worse than second place. But a great job tonight. We talked about this two-game stretch the last two, you know, with Wyatt last week and, and Arlington Heights tonight, that the Mustangs, if they wanted to secure their spot in the playoffs and hopefully secure at least a, a home game in the first round in by district, they needed to win both and they get both victories. I mean, huge for them. And they passed the first test. Every part of your season is a test. They passed the last test here. Next week, it's all about making sure we sharpen our pencils, right? We dot our I's, we cross our T's, we get some other, we get some underclassmen maybe in the game, but every senior gets to play next weekend, and most likely in that particular game and get their shine for senior night. We hear the great line, alma mater right now with the team in front of the band. Tell you what makes me nervous is these players doing backflips after the game is over. Major Hector's out there flipping around like, let's be careful, guys. We got, we got more stuff to do. The Mustangs do the job tonight. And again, great defensive performance as the Mustangs don't have any turnovers but come up with a huge turnover on downs in the second half. The Mustang offense was about as efficient as we have seen them all season, Tim both on the ground and through the air. The offensive line tonight with the change in the starting lineup with Hunter Caudill moving to center and Ben Williams coming back from injury to start at right tackle. Did a lot of good in this game tonight and the Mustangs get the big win 35 to 14. Yeah, Carly just walks into the press box and she's got this look of disgust on her face and I couldn't be happier. That's what you get. We told you a couple weeks ago how this game was gonna go. You didn't believe us, but this is what happens. This Great performance all the way around by Grapevine. And how about Ben Williams back in the lineup, making his presence felt from the very first play. I guarantee he's going to be on Tim's takes next week. Yeah, most yeah, he and he deserves it. The Mustangs get the huge win tonight. Three touchdowns from Connor Bell. Two touchdowns by DeMontrez Dunn all on the ground. But Harrison Hackbarth was also very effective in the passing attack tonight. And the Mustangs get the huge win, and they will go into the, into the senior night next week against Trimble Tech needing a win to actually don't even need the win yeah. they will they will they will need a win to maybe feel good about get, themselves? maybe possibly with a little bit of miracle help Heights get a co-district championship I mean, but the heritage were to lose. Were, yes yeah. but unlikely but at least that possibility is still there so the mustangs get the win tonight 28 or 35 to 14 again 
Senior night next week. We'll be back at Mustang Panther Stadium as they'll take on Triple Tech. That game will be once again on Thursday night, not Friday night, Thursday night, November 2nd, as the Mustangs will close out their regular season and get ready for the playoffs. That'll wrap it up for us here tonight from Farrington Field in downtown Fort Worth. For our sideline reporter, Carly Isbell, for our executive producer, Trey Bell, my name is Jacob Dedimore, along with my broadcast partner, Tim Smith, from Champion Sports Radio. This broadcast on Tradio has been our pleasure to bring it to you tonight. And until next Thursday, when the Mustangs finish up the season with the Trimble Tech Bulldogs, everybody have a great weekend. This has been Mustang Friday Night.